All right, just thought this was going to be more of a freeform thing today. So welcome in to anybody in, around, through on this rather windy, blustery day here on the east coast of the United States. This is Beatles Eternally. So I am excited last night, after all these years of playing digital baseball, finally got a no-hitter, 1983 Orioles versus the 1990 um, Oakland A's and Scott McGregor pitched a no-no. And Ripken with the walk-off in the bottom of the ninth. It was awesome. Really, really long stream because I did like a bunch of other baseball games before that. So, But had six witnesses to it. Caught the... Uh, even grabbed a screenshot of it. And I thought today would be kind of fun um, to do some comparisons of some digital baseball games obviously not all the ones I own and I don't play them all and um, why did I decide to do this so last night I was kinda just looking around because we do a lot of talk about strat PC baseball and I'm not a fan of strat PC baseball largely because I'm not a fan of strat because of their customer service but um, I used to play the strat PC game until I tried to uh, you know, when I bought a new laptop and everything, I just wanted to sort of move everything over, you know, like you do. Um, and, you know, Strat, because I was, you know, in Europe, you know, wanting to use Team Viewer software and all this crap to make sure that I didn't steal their precious seasons or whatever after spending $400 with the company. But I thought last night after that, that no hitter, I didn't want to follow that up on that channel. I couldn't. I watched Robbie Warburg's Federal League. Um, game um, on, on baseball for Windows, and I thought, oh, man, I want to do some more baseball, whatever. So I started sort of bopping around, and I found this guy um, who um, does a lot of strat, actually pretty much all strat PC. I can't remember uh, the name. Um, he's a good guy. The only reason I didn't subscribe to his channel is because it was all strat PC, which really doesn't interest me. But I was watching some games and watching some games with other people in the community <clears throat> and um, kind of watching, not only looking at the interface, which we may even talk about baseball, or interfaces in digital baseball as well. Um, and I'm always, I always do these as live streams, by the way, because I, you know, thoughts come to me. I have such a scattered brain and I figure, you know, some, some idea is going to come to me after I do a recording. So, um... But I thought maybe we'd look at play-by-play -play comparisons and maybe interfaces and stuff like that because, the, to be honest with you, I find Strat PC really, really lacking in both play department and its um and its interface. It's it's just and and maybe to echo Jester and I don't know if ID Jester has changed his opinion on the interface of Strat PC between his epic rant of uh, 2019 I believe it was and today I really don't know I don't see him playing Strat PC on his channel too much so I'm guessing that he's still there on that um, and of course you know we talk about play by play and those of us who are content creators um, we're we're basically calling games some people like Christopher Slovak our Red Sox fan Dave Little um, Robert at RGL Network um, are really, really good. Ron Jockett over on Twitch. Um, these guys are really good broadcasters. They, they really are. Um, and as most of you guys know, I, I come on here, I don't try to, I don't sound like a broadcaster. Um, with my acting training, I could. I, I just don't want to. I just want to just hang out and talk. So that's kind of what this is, and right now there's kind of two people watching, and it keeps, you know, go to zero, and then back to three, and whatever. Hopefully some people will come in and give their thoughts on maybe some games that they play that I don't. So this beautiful gray screen that you see up here is Diamond Mind Baseball. Um, and this one's kind of an interesting way to start. And we're going to be, like, flipping around to newer games, older games, um, what games are customizable, whatever. Um, I don't have digital base, digital diamond baseball installed. I probably should do that really quickly, um, just to talk about that because it's another one that I own. Um, I'm not going to be worrying about breaking out older games at this point, like Micro League Baseball and whatever. But I will comment 
Um, in fact, that would be a good place to start. So if you've done either done baseball, digital baseball gaming for a while, or you're just new to it, um, you would have had to have heard at some point about Micro League Baseball. So this came out in the Commodore 64 back in the mid-80s. Of course, if you have a Commodore emulator, you can still play the game today, and it's, it's, it's fun. And what was amazing about that game, and I should find it, just a screenshot of it for you. Um, in fact, I will while I'm talking. Um, so the Commodore, after it loaded in, it's, it's sort of Microsoft Basic, which really that's where Microsoft kind of started. Um, you had 38K free. That was it. 38K. Um, and this had a, it was a pretty decent baseball engine for um, probably something, I mean, very limited. So you had to squeeze all of these, these sort of, you know, all the, all the, maybe somewhat rudimentary graphics into it or whatever. Um, but then it also had a really fun baseball engine in it, or should say has, because again, you can, um, you know, you can play this game today. So let me just bring up a picture of it here. And I believe this is the Commodore 64 version of it. I'll bring up a page that reviews it, and then we'll, we'll talk about it for a minute. Um, just trying to get one that has a picture. Yeah, there we go. All right, so let me bring this over here so you guys can see. And um, go from there. All right. So that was going to be showing up on your screen. Um, and this came out um, precisely in 1984 by Micro League Sports Association. And it was available on the Amiga, which is an awesome computer, uh, the Apple II Atari 8-bit computer, so like the Atari 800. Thank you. I see two likes in the chat. Thank you very much. The Atari ST, of course, the C64, and the IBM PC. Now... I, this is probably, I think, what you'll see on your screen. At least I hope it's going to uh, come over here at some point. Um, and let me check OBS because it doesn't seem like it is coming over. Smelly Wrestling Geek. Hey, how you doing there, Smelly Wrestling Geek? So, um, don't know why this isn't coming over on our uh, on our stream here. Because I'm just ma I'm gonna make sure I'm just using a window capture here as opposed to something else. Yeah, it's sh uh, for some reason it's not showing up, and I don't know why. So uh, there it comes finally, 20 minutes later. Hope you uh, hope you're doing well today, Smelly Wrestling Geek. Oh yeah, just to finish about the broadcasters. Yeah, I'm not I'm not like the other guys on here who are really good, and I don't make any pretensions of doing so. I just having fun. Um. Anyhow, believe it or not, this game is really, really, really fun. It had a really nice AI. It was, um, in fact, endorsed, believe it or not, by Sparky Anderson. And um, we'll scroll up here, and you will actually see. Uh, this is from a friend of mine's site, uh, Derek Bain, who does a lot of books um, on, you know, like, sort of retro stuff and everything like that. And he's a big retro gamer, but he's a huge baseball fan. And, um, you know, one of his books is Hardball Architects. Really, really good stuff. Um, Richard Butler. Hello, Beatles. Roll it to the new your channel. I don't play uh, PC, C&D um, only, but still interested in your topic. Thank you very much, Richard Butler. And for some reason, I think I've run across your channel because your name really, really rings a bell to me, and in a good way. So welcome in. And there's nothing wrong with cards and dice whatsoever. Um, I haven't played it um, since I was an undergraduate, um, but I still have uh, I still have a, uh, a Sports Illustrated baseball. Somebody just recently did. And is that you? That's why I'm thinking it's you, Richard. I'm not sure, but it is um, Sports Illustrated baseball. But this, this came out I think in 2019, and this is why I'm, I'm wondering about your your name. It's a brilliant, brilliant cards and dice uh, recreation of Sports Illustrated Baseball. Comes with about 900 players, cards already done. Um, really beautiful, full color, and then a CD with uh, 
uh, a ton of extra players and it's really really good but back in the day C and D before we get to this and no you didn't miss much at all um, MV this is kind of a rambling that will lead into a game at some point so um, and then I'm going to be going to your comments and everything so this game and I, I, I could pull it out and see who it is um, I love it it's it's really really good um, back in my university days used to play status pro baseball played APA played some strat um, and really really love them and then of course with you know computers you start jumping down into that rabbit hole but there's so th th this is not about um, you know sort of comparing digital baseball to cards and dice I think there's aren't we lucky enough to live in a time when they can all coexist and we can all have fun um, recreating this beautiful national pastime in the way that we choose um, but micro league baseball was really amazing for its time because um, these graphics certainly by 2023 standards are nothing to uh, write home about but back in the day this thing was fun um, and if you had the I, I believe it was the franchise creator disc I, I, I can't remember exactly what it was called but um, you could type in your own teams and I remember just typing in teams and you can do that if you have a, a Commodore 64 emulator this game is on there along with all um, all the other iterations of um, Micro League Baseball up through I think number four or something um, you could type in your own teams and it was it was just awesome and a friend of mine who was a very very good computer program a programmer actually it, I don't know how he did it uh, but he created um, a program that would keep standings and stuff like this and somehow he was able to get it to talk um, to the Micro League Baseball program uh, but by the time you know he really had it fully developed um, you know we were already um, you know jumping into Amiga and stuff like that um, but the game was fun and um, it was it was pretty cool it was it, it was pretty cool um, it was a baseball tip uh, baseball sim game a text game much like you know what we're, we're used to nowadays playing with action PC baseball and of course you know the big sexy one out of the park baseball what have you but you could do so much with this you could you know adjust your offense defenses you could adjust your infield you could do a lot of stuff with this um, it even had it the the Commodore 64 version had um, an animated crowd and it had a play-by-play -play that went across the scoreboard um, which was really neat and for 1984 and with only 38k of memory think about this you could write like an email right uh, maybe an email of a couple paragraphs and your email today was larger than this game which I think is brilliant or just some image you might have an image of your dog or your cat as your or you know Miss July on your computer and that image is larger this entire baseball game and it was so much fun so much fun um, it was necessarily for its time very Spartan looking of course um, but you could you know play games you could create teams um, it came with I, I'm trying to, to see here if this um, if, if Derek's uh, review of this talks about because I can't remember how many um, how many teams came with it um, but it was basically just a one pitch thing now you could also select your pitches which was kind of neat right so like in, in, in a great game nowadays like action PC baseball um, you just you know you can select pitch pitch around pitch aggressively um, what have you but what, what's really neat here and, and this is jogging my memory now so on defense you, you could choose between a fastball curveball slider or an off-speed changeup and your four strategy uh, options were um, pitch out corners in, infield in, and intentional walk, um, which was kind of neat, you know, um, just kind of cool. It do, it never it didn't use left right split stats, um, you know, you just didn't have enough room to do it. But it was fun, and while I wanted to sort of bring it up and 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 just run it through a game, I decided I just didn't feel like 
hooking up an emulator. But as I'm scrolling through here, you can see, like, here's the 1984 Padres, the 1984 Cubs. Um, you, you had basically the little pitching line here for everything. You could compile your stats, of course. It was, it was really, really, really great. And the fact that it did have the nice little play-by-play -play in the window. Um, and a pretty easy interface when we're talking about computer. Here it is, the general manager owner disk. Here it was. And I remember hunting this down. Um, oh my goodness gracious. So with this, you could copy a team from another disk, delete a team, edit stats, chain rosters. You could create new teams. Um, you could do so much. And this was still at the time when digital baseball really was um, kind of not really a thing yet. I mean, you had you had games back in the day from Epics like Star League Baseball. Of course, you had the arcade games like Hardball, which used fictional players, and it was strictly a what we would call now a Twitch game, right? All about reflexes and things like that. And it was fun in its own right, but there was, I always, before I discovered Micro League Baseball, I always wanted to, like, but I want to play baseball on the computer. And this did it. And I ended up spending more time with this general manager owner disc than with the actual game. You know, I'd create some teams and stuff like that. And I remember, um, so I mean, I played this later, obviously, than when it came out, but... I remember pouring over my copies of, um, um, you know, like total total baseball, um, right? The and then the uh, also the sports encyclopedia by David you by Nefton Cohen. Um, you book guys will remember that, and just typing in stats. Now I don't want to get copyright stricken, but I wonder if there's just enough here that would just show. Um, let me see. And um, by the way, if you haven't, um, you know, you can find it also um, if you want to. You can find this in a um, on the Internet Wayback Machine at the Archive Org. So if you have an Apple II emulator, if you don't feel like, you know, buying a big emulator, there you go. Um, but let me see what we can do here with this. Hi, this is Hardball Retro. Oh, wait, got to do something here. You guys are going to hear it. And obviously, I don't want to get a copyright strike, so I'm just trying to find some parts of it. Let me see. Let's go to the instant replay. Nope, they don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> when did you get instant replay? Uh, when did they start? In so there you see the... Um, 12, 2013, I think was called. The there you see the animated time. crowd. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and mute this, um, which is really fun. Um, Richard says he doesn't have a channel but view many videos. So this is Kurt Berglund, who's excellent. Our Red Sox fans, good friend. Dave Gardner, etc. Nice. The tactile nature of cards and dice. Absolutely. So here we can watch this. And again, I can't let this play all the way through. See the batter coming to the plate. And then offense right, is going to choose, you know, hit away, bunt, whatever. So Cal Ripken on deck or at bat on deck is Dave Winfield. Um, so again, I want to keep this sort of quiet. Let me see if I can jump ahead to a little bit of game action here. So defense is about to uh, choose its thing. And there we go. So the ball. Let's let this one play out here just for a second, and then we'll go ahead and kill it. But I'm using this video under um, fair use, copyright, just to uh, show. So there's the 3-0 curveball, high bounder in the hole. And Ripken scoops it up, routine throw to first. Just got him. So that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And that was Micro League Baseball. Um, so a great entry point and for its time. This was this was really the baseball game that you could play digitally, take anywhere. MV says he loved the game. Smelly Wrestling Geek says the great thing about cards and dice is the level of unpredictability. Certainly it is. Ask any craps player. <laughs> All right, now we're going to get back to this um, this blank screen, this big old gray screen that you see here. 
This is Diamond Mind Baseball. Um, this is a venerable PC game that came from, I believe, Pursuit of Pennant. You can go back to the, uh, again, the Internet Archive if you want to find old versions of this game. But this is the latest. Um, so aesthetically, some people would say it's not pleasing. Uh, there's no sound. There's no animation in Diamond Mind Baseball whatsoever. But what lies beneath is an incredibly deep, um, incredibly deep baseball simulation engine. It's not my intent really to talk too much about engines today as much as I want to talk about sort of play-by-play -play and interface. So for people getting into digital baseball, um, again, if you want a good, accurate um, baseball engine, Diamond Mind is hard to beat. Flexibility, um, it's superb. But let's talk about its interface and its play-by-play. -play. And I will tell you this, its play-by-play -play is absolutely phenomenal. It is phenomenal. You have to play it out for a, a lot to really experience it all the way. So up here, right, we've got all this kind of stuff. But we're going to go right to a game. All right, so we're going to pick an exhibition game. So again, very, very utilitarian interface. But what's nice about this, once you get used to it, you can play any team against any team with any seasons you have. And this is only a smattering of what I have for this particular game. So we're just going to go ahead and just, um, we're going to do, let me find two old teams that will be matched up nicely against each other. And I think these two should work. All right. So Cincinnati at Boston, we can uh, select our ballparks, whatever, um, all kinds of things. So this is scheduled for nine innings. Let's just do managers. And for the home team, um, I'm going to do... I'm just going to let the home team at least just uh, select um, the starting lineups. So we're going to click OK. And then we're actually going to get to the main screen. All right. And then we're just going to click OK. Um, oh, I'm, did I do this the wrong way? Ah. Let me cancel this and try this again. Sorry. I'm still. Um, still. T -t 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 -t. So manager. Let me see. Home team. And I. Thought I did that. So home team, all human, all computer, except we'll make these human. That's the mistake I made. Because I just don't want to take the time here to um, set up lineups. There we go. So here's what we're looking at. And some might say, well, wow, this is not really a huge improvement over um, micro league baseball, but rather a step back. And you would be wrong. Um, interface wise it's fairly straightforward um, and up here will be the main play by play window we can look at any players that we want um, going all over the place by just double clicking and we can look at a player we can look at all his ratings of course and we can look at any player um, on this roster do the same thing um, but we're going to go ahead and just do like just a little bit. And you guys will be able to read, and I'll just read it to you. But play-by-play um, -by -play is really important, and one of the strengths of this game, if you don't mind reading, is it's play-by-play. -play. It's really quite good, in my opinion. So this quick 1-1 one, one over here just means that usually you would do challenge hitter, and then you would set your defense. So we're just going to do that, and I'll show you the quick 1-1 one, one is just a shortcut to what we've done. So here we go. Here's the pitch. This one up the middle. Deneen thought he should have had it, but Buford had a base hit into center. And then as the game goes on, it's going to build more and more. So we'll do a quick one and one. So we have a runner on first. The one two pitch. Deneen pitched to Snyder. Ground ball right up the middle. Scott by himself for one, but the relay is 2 8. Snyder is safe at first. And out of the stretch goes Deneen. The 3 2 pitch forthcoming. Bounced hard to Gardner. This might do it. Out at second and out of first. Getting the double play, retiring the side. And then it's going to give you the scoring. Um, so in this little exhibition game, you're seeing kind of a, a sense of what this does. So it's not just giving you just a play result, but it's giving you some, um, you know, just some kind of fun 
play-by-play -play to go with. So the payoff pitch to Johnson. Johnson grounds it back up the middle. Buford with the grab on the shortstop side off of the bag. Long off balance throw, not in time. And Johnson has an infield single. Um, you'll, you'll see things in the play-by-play -play in this game um, where it's going to draw out certain things. It's situationally aware, um, which is really a lot of fun. So, so sometimes... Um, a, and again, I don't want to devote this entire video to just this game, but right, you can go to, to where like a twisting foul ball becomes an adventure, and um, the play-by-play -play in this, which by the way, you can customize play-by-play -play in this game, which is really nice, something you can also do in Digital Diamond Baseball, which I'm not sure I'm going to cover today. I may or may not. Um, but this one I would rate definitely um, as one of the better for play-by-play -play if you're looking for something like that. Um, the game has, the, the, it is gaining traction in the community. Tape Saturator, hey, I've been hearing your name uh, bounded, or bandied about in the community, so welcome in. He says, hi guys, just bought Diamond Mind yesterday. Seems to have a very decent play-by-play. -play. It definitely does. Um, and there's David Baseball Demos. He says he loves me some Diamond Mind. <coughs> and in fact, it's d because of David Baseball Demos um, doing a demonstration of this very game that I found this community. He was the very first baseball gaming video I ever saw um, on YouTube. And I remember, David, you had, you had your, I think you had your webcam or something pointed at the screen or something. And I was just fascinated. Um, but yes, it's got, it's got, and, and the more you play um, with this game, the more that you will see that um, it's play-by-play -play is so good. Now I did say who knows what else, and that does mean interface. So um, a lot of what's here um, is so nice. You can go into your defensive lineup, you can look at things, you can make changes. Um, you, down here all these tabs are going to give you sort of advanced stats, so you know like runs created for 27. Um, Right here, you can see their their ratings all the way down. Really, really nice. So this is the and who knows what else part of it. Um, this game requires you to dig deeply. It really, really does. Okay. Um, and if you're not afraid to do that, this is a very, very rewarding game to play. Um, it is starting to gain some traction in the community. Um, of course, there's player photos and within the game there's ways to get these player photos in um, really nice there are the ballparks there are mods out there you can get to dress up the ballparks if you want you will get this top view down or top down view of it um, there's also which is really kinda cool um, there's a there's a ballpark generator out there it was originally used for out of the park baseball earlier versions uh, but you can generate parks in that and actually bring them into this game. I'm not going to cover that in this video. So there's a lot more you could do with this. The negatives about Diamond Mine Baseball I've heard from some people. The lack of sound. Um, really the lack of bells and whistles. This is very utilitarian. Um, however, what attracted me this, to this game as a former cards and dice player, that even though you can't throw dice, this has that feel of, I always thought, Okay, back in the day, right, so APA came out in 1951, and STRAT came out in 1961, and I thought, if there were personal computers back in the day, when those games came out, what would a computer game look like, a, a, a good computer baseball sim? And I think this approach is that. There's really, really, really a lot you can do with this game. A few more words about the interface. We'll go ahead and just cancel out of this. Um, for anybody that might be new to this, Organizer is your best friend. Organizer is where really all the magic takes place. If you want to create teams, adjust teams, whatever, we can go here to players. Here are all the players, and this is all-time great players. This is just all-time great players, volume one. This is a, this would be similar to what Action PC does with its baseball history collection, though not as extensive. It's only 4,500 players. Still a lot you can do with it. Um, you can break baseball down into eras with this thing. Not sure if you guys knew that. Um, but the main thing is the interface. Um, it's, it's not going to hold your hand. You've got to look around. 
Um, other negatives about the game that I've heard is, is installing databases. So there's a different process for installing a database that is done by Imagine Sports, the maker of this game, and if you have homebrews. But I've covered that in another video. But I just wanted to touch on interface and play-by-play -play for Diamond Mine Baseball. So, and for those of you new to my channel, sorry about all these um, icons you're about to see. All right. Now, the next one that we're going to look at um, that's been around a while, in fact, it's been around uh, since 1999, and this is a very early version of it, and it's not even going to cover up the whole screen, is Out of the Park Baseball. Yes, 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 baseball demos. The AI in Diamond Mine Baseball is superb. And in fact, it was once the king. Um, so a lot of uh, like ESPN and, 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 and other like uh, you know sort of big time sports people, um, Diamond Mine. In fact, some still use still use Diamond Mine for uh, predicting uh, seasons and things like that. This is Out of the Park Baseball 8, and we will get to Out of the Park Baseball 2023 later on in this video. Um, but what struck me revisiting this, and you can find this on the Out of the Park forums. This is absolutely free. And it's got every season from 1871, I believe, to 2007. All right, so we're going to continue. And there's your main screen. Now, when this started getting a bit sexier, and Out of the Park considers this the best of their old generation, um, we're going to go ahead and click Continue for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, there's no sound in this game either. But... This, I think, was an attempt by um, by Marcus Heinsohn at the time to make a tarted up diamond mind, if you will, or to take on the text-based simulation and make it even more robust. Attempt to make it user-friendly, but we'll talk about that. Um, this game really wasn't uh, user-friendly, but compared to a lot of the digital baseball sims at the time, and Out of the Park actually had its first edition in 1999. It was a DOS game. Um, you had to use the external Sean, Sean Lama database to create your own teams, but um, it was it was definitely a step in the right direction. But as you can see here in this front interface, and we will get to the play-by-play, -play, which is really good in this game, actually. Um, one of the big knocks about Out of the Park Baseball until you started getting into the more 3D versions that we're used to now, is look at, I mean, all the choices. So if we go down here, I can review my, all of these things are hyperlinked, and I can go there. I can search for players, all kinds of things. I have tons of menu options up here. And if that's not enough, I have options down here. So there's really, really a lot going on in this game. Um, so the big negative about this game is the interface. They have crowded so much here. So um, let's say I just want to go to set le depth charts and stuff like that. Um, and I, I can, and you can get really granular with this, right? Um, setting lineups uh, versus left-handers and DH right-handers and designated hitters and just left-handers, right-handers and good old-fashioned pure baseball seven day lineups for each team that you want to go to but let's go to the league home screen and um, this is going and I have the 1938 season in here so that's why if you're wondering who the hell is Blanton there you go um, so it keeps tracks of all the games everything this is dense this is dense you can open things in an external browser um, but let's, uh, and see here also, so play games from the league schedule. Let's do one. And um, let's go here. And we're going to bring up a game. So this is going to be the Cincinnati Reds, Pittsburgh Pirates. Hey, there's Aaron Reed. Welcome in. Welcome in, welcome in. All right, so we're going to go ahead and bring up this, um, we're going to do this game here, um, Pirates and Reds. All right. So let's, and this is again one of those things, as much as I've played it uh, so much, so much. Um, all right, so we're on the, on the Pirates home page. 
and as you can see, I'm like, okay, geez, what do I do here? Um, hmm. It's been it's been a while. So imagine when you bought this back in 2009, what you were dealing with. All right. We can auto play, of course, everything. We can go back to the manager home screen, play games versus Cincinnati. Um, and we need to go back again. Sorry about that, guys. All right, play games. And we go to play game. And there we go. All right. So you saw what I had to do to go all over the place just to find this. I still think this is worth downloading. It's free, and I'll show you why. Lots of neat features. So you can even set up before every game. You could decide, well, you know what? I want to play a DH in 1938, but just for this game, you can do that. You can have photos on the field. The ballpark really doesn't matter. It comes with all these ballparks, but what these are really are just ballpark effects. Because as you're going to see, you're going to have Citizens Bank Park. All right, so I'm happy with everything here. Um, we can look at the lineup starting pitcher for each thing, uh, for each team, option previews. Let's start this game. Now, this is the main game screen. This is where everything is played out, at least you'd think. Well, you could already, in this, switch to one pitch mode, which was nice. Okay. Um, the other thing is you could look at it as this, and again, it just always has Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. But if you go to the Scion webcast, now you're going to see some, something that's even more dense. And if I'm going to pitch mode, each pitch that I do is actually going to show up in this box, and it's going to count everything, show you a pitch sequence, which is really, really cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and pitch. Welcome to Pittsburgh, where the Reds meet the Pirates. It's opening day here in Pittsburgh. It gives you the attendance. We have a temperature of 48 degrees, and it's very cloudy. Wind blowing in from right at 9 miles per hour. Fry is the batter. Bauer rubs up the baseball. Now he's ready. Looks in for the sign, the wind, and the pitch. Fry takes a fastball low and outside, and there it is. And it's got nice play-by-play. -play. So we're going to go ahead and click this. And we're going to go ahead and pitch again. Count one ball and no strikes. The wind up in the pitch. Fry takes a swing slow. Laurel past Bowers and up the middles. Coming on is Young. The pickup throws over to first, and that retires the runner. Uh, first out of the inning. Sparkling display of defense. So much like um, Diamond Mine Baseball, you will see in this game that there's going to be lots of little nice touches like this, which I really, really appreciate. Um, we'll just switch to one pitch mode. And who do we have here? All right, next hitter is Higgins. Oh, to the count here. Bowers will probably waste one. See if he can get Higgins chasing. Bowers checks the sign, winds and fires. Higgins jabs at it and misses for strike three. He got fooled on that pitch. Two away, and that's his first strikeout today. This is really nice play-by-play. -play. It really is. Um, you can go to um, Network, and the Network is going to show you all the games that are being played out of town. Well, we're familiar with that now, of course, with with all the baseball sims that we play. Um, you can check this easily in Out of Park 2023. Action PC has its, uh, the, I guess they call it a 10-minute ticker. So this is fun. I really like it. Um, and, I, and I would strongly suggest you guys check it out. Um, the other thing, of course, you can do is all this stuff here. Who is this Lonnie Frey dude? Oh, there he is. There's Lonnie Frey. And we can see his stats currently in 1938 as we're playing, but we see his real stats from 1937, 36, and 35. Um, and just go all over the place. We can see all his ratings. Um, if we want to, um, we can look at scouting reports on him. And it's going to give you the potential of the player, stuff like that. Fielding stats, his real life stats, um, and there's his. There, this is like, and, and this goes all the way through his career. So, <coughs> again, up here, traditional baseball stats. I mean, total bases. We really don't look at total bases anymore. Um, but a really, really robust game, and um, I think worth it. I think definitely worth it. It has a lot of the same bells and whistles. What are the things that you can't do in this game, however? 
Um, you can't really mix and match teams from different eras, unfortunately. That is that came with later iterations of out of the park baseball. Byzantine interface. Um, it it might even be crazier than um, um, Strat PC, which I'm not going to show. I don't play it. Um, game log. Um, I don't know whether this is going to freak out. I'm going to try to open this in a browser. Oh, it did. There we go. So this is nice, and we think this is a modern feature. So this just generated a web page for me, as you guys will see uh, coming up. And I know this isn't the most compelling subject, but I just wanted to just kind of, again, give you guys some thoughts about a lot of the digital games I play. And we're going to get into the sexier ones here in a few minutes. But I think these older games have merit. So I'm just waiting for the uh, replay. YouTube having a serious, serious lag today. Anyhow, I hope everybody's doing well. And Richard, I know you don't have a channel, but there is something about your name. And, and I'm... Did you develop a cards and dice game? Are you the Richard Butler that did? I, I don't know, but I want to go grab that Sports Illustrated and, and, and look at that. Um, the UIs for both Out of the Park um, and uh, Franchise need, need some revamping. They do. I will say this, though, um, Smelly Wrestling Geek. I've never played um, Franchise Hockey Manager, but I, I play Out of the Park Baseball a lot. And you can see from here and to what it has now, um, it's just much better. So there you go. It has created right now a website, and that website that it's created is just what's happened just in the game so far. Um, but up here you have all this hyperlink stuff. If I click, if I click on Major League, I get stuff that's going on in the league. So there's a note about Cleveland um, that Johnny Allen is out for two weeks um, due to an injury. Um, this is pretty brilliant. Scores. All right, so these are the scores going on right now in the game. This is cool. Um, it really, really is. Uh, couldn't We couldn't do um, standings there because there are none yet. So a lot of this, you have to sort of go all the way through. We can go back to its um, homepage. But again, I think this is really cool. Um, so let's just go ahead and knock out that web page. Boom, it's gone. Um, but there we go. Um, this is pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. If you can put up with a crazy interface, you've got a really superb free game with a great, great, great play-by-play. Um, -play. So let's go back to the regular broadcast. We're just going to pitch and do a couple more. Goodman's coming to bat next. Bauer checks the sign. He pitches. Swung on. Grounded toward the second baseman. Young makes the pickup and flips it to first for the out. There's three away. That retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. We click the mouse. We're ready to go. Gus Sura to lead off here for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hollingworth delivers. Sura swings. Lines a hard shot down the line into short left. Cook has to hurry. It bounces down into the corner. Sura's going for two. Cook with the throw to second, but Sura's already in there standing up. And, and that's it's nice. And it's really, really a small footprint. And again, everything... I, actually, I think this only goes back to 1900 or 1901. But still, with this free download, you have 107 years of baseball. Um, click on, on... just It's good stuff. Um, but... And let's go ahead and just quick play to the game. Boom. And there it is. And the Pittsburgh Pirates defeat the Reds 5-0. We can go through again everything hyperlinked. So not only do we see, um, and it's doing game score, by the way, which we see in Action PC. So it's in here. But let's say, who is who is this Hollingsworth guy? I can't remember, right? Ground out supplies. I can click on him, and there's his player report. And it's right there. It is right there. It's really, really good stuff. Um, back here, you use it like a web browser. Use these arrows up here. Once you get used to it, it's nice. Here's Gus Sir for the box. Um, doesn't use real pictures, unfortunately, um, at least that I can remember. But look at this. You can look at how he did, right? Ahead in account, behind in account, full count, whether the count's 3 and 1, 3 and 0, oh, 2 and 2, 1 and 2. There's a lot going on in this version of Out of the Park Baseball. So, no sound, 
tough, tough interface as you guys saw. Um, but I think definitely worth it. It's a freebie. You get, of course, the same thing that we have in Action PC Baseball, right? You get a detailed pitch by pitch account of the game. Really, really nice. All right, so that is out of the park eight. Let's go back. And yeah, back, 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 back. And or we'll just go ahead and close out the game. All right. So Scion home. And of course you have minor leagues in this game as well. So good stuff. And not much else to say about this except that um, a lot going on. Um, obviously the resolution, there's no way you can really increase the resolution of the game. This was put out again when we still have, right, remember the, the CRT monitors. This would fill the full screen, right, because much lower resolution. It's like 800 by 600 and you had a nice full big thing. And this was beautiful um, back in its day. So let's go ahead and leave the game here and we're back here um, on our home team. But you have to be able to say, all right, I'm going to take some time to learn the interface. And, if, and it's nice. And I know I've said that a whole bunch of times. And this is actually, um, again, free. So we can look at, here's all the power rankings for everybody. Pittsburgh ranking up here. And everything will take you to all over the place. We look at the Brooklyn Dodgers. There they are, Brooklyn Dodgers homepage. We can look at um, the team leaders. So robust baseball game. All right. But we are going to go ahead and we're going to jump out of here. You can also play and act as manager of any team. So good stuff. And we're going to leave that. All right. Let me, let me go back in here. Perry Rubino, another person coming in, new person. Welcome to the channel. He says, um, I used Out of the Park Baseball 22 for your league last year. It was great, but hearing so many good things. Oh, we're going to get to Action PC 2023, my friends, so hang in there if you can. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Um, it's going to, and uh, Forever Remain 90 is in here. Welcome in, my friend. So, um, yeah, Out of the Park Baseball 23 and Action PC Baseball. I'll tell you what, Perry, for you, let's jump into that, and then I'll continue my uh, talk about interfaces and play-by-play. -play. Um, we use that, and then we'll go back. So you're considering Action PC Baseball 2023. Well, let me turn you on to the magic here, my friend, and welcome to the channel. All right, so splash stream coming up. I do hope that showing you guys out of the park eight, even if you have the most recent edition, download it, have some fun with it. All right, so Perry, what you're seeing here after that opening screen is um, a league that um, 10 of us are running on this channel called the Ned McGreevy Enough Said League. How customizable is this? Well, we'll tell you. All right, and out of the park baseball, which I should have both up and do a head-to-head -head comparison. In fact, why the hell not? Let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to do this. Boom. And um, I'm going to be switching between the two applications. Let's do a comparison and why these two are um, great complements to one another. So while everything is loading up, there's Robbie Wartberg. Robbie, I've seen it grow from version 1, and sometime I will find my copy of version 1 and I'll put it up here. All right, but let's talk about Action PC Baseball first, because that's the one. All right, so Perry, you were talking about setting up your own league. All right. How deep do you want to go, my friend? That is the first question. Right? So he says, um, it was great, but hearing so many things about Action PC 2023. Let's say we just want to make um, a league with just teams from all over the place. Pretty simple to do. All right? Pretty simple to do. Um, and there's a lot of these um, in here already. But if we want to do this, uh, let's go to, and this is where we need our Steve Arino in here as well. Um, we're going to create 
um, we can create all star teams here but what I want to do is show you how easy this is um, once I find it. This is something I don't do a lot because I, I, I work with player level mostly. Um, let me see here. Where is it? This is where we need things like this. So hang on guys for a second while I find this. Um, just because I wasn't ready to do this but that's alright. Okay, so what we're going to do here, Perry, is we're going to create a blank league. And let's call it, um, I don't know, how to create a league. League. Not that it really cares, but there we go. So it's going to create a folder. All right, now, what do we want to do with this? Well, this says this league contains only free agents to create or import teams, select rosters. We're going to just do this, and we're just going to import some teams. All right, so here we do. So when this comes up here, first thing, we can change our name to the league. So we're just going to call it the 1-13-2023 um, league. And I'll do this in format for Western or for American style. Right, so whatever, national. This is how easy this is. <coughs> Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Perry, well, this is pretty similar to the way you can do it in, action, in Out of the Park 23. And you're right. And we'll get into that. All right, but up here, I can do teams. I can create new teams, import teams, league. I can create a new draft league from here to go into the draft module, players. Right? We can go, we can look at its database. We can do single teams. But let's go to, le or to um, teams and let's import teams. So... What you can do with this is anything that you have installed, it will work from. And this is not everything I have. I have tons and tons and tons of stuff that I haven't installed yet here. So we're going to use Steve Tate's, um, we're going to work with these files. These are freely available, by the way. Let's go to his National League five-year franchises. And these are the teams. And so, Perry, another thing is if you're thinking about um, adopting Action PC 2023, let me give you a piece of advice, if I may. Um, so, a valued member of our community who is not in here, surprisingly yet, um, Steve Tate, but we know he will be. Um, if you buy this game, and I would also suggest picking up the Baseball History Collection just to give the developer a little bit more love, what Steve Tate has created is a series of five-year franchise files. And so he's taken teams, most of these teams are above 500 but now he's adding in more that aren't and this is basically another way to play the game so it's a five-year snapshot of a good run of a team or whatever so I'm a Buccos fan and so obviously I'm gonna bring in the Pirates from 1924 to uh, 20 what is it 28 all right so I'm gonna I can just do this little check mark who else do I want to bring in? Well, let's bring in the St. Louis Cardinals from the 20s. Let's go down a little bit further. Let's bring in these 1988 Giants. And how about the 82 LA Dodgers? Let's bring them in. I'm just going to import teams. Import four teams. Now, here are the teams. Where do I want to put them? I can set as I'm going on the fly. This is something that's nicer than out of the park baseball. So in Out of the Park Baseball, as you know, when you're setting up any kind of draft league, and this has to do with interface, so we're really not off the subject, you already have to predetermine what kind of league setup you want. right? With this, you don't have to do that. You can just drag teams into where you want them. So these are all National League, and we're just going to all just put them in Division One. I. I just grab them, bring them down, and now right, Pittsburgh is going to be where I want Pittsburgh to be. Let's say we're going to take St. Louis and maybe we'll put them in Division 2. There they are. Okay. Um, and so you see all oh, drag and drop. Let's drop them in with St. Louis. I'm not, this is not a league I'm going to keep. Let's move LA uh, down and, and just like this, just to show you. And, and, and once this is done, you can still go back and forth. All right. So we'll do exit. And right now we'll exit, and there we go. I've got four teams already in there. 
I can chop and change and mix and match anything I want here, Harry, at all. Click on these, there's the rosters, all ready to go. Not ready to play yet, you, you know, signing ballparks, things like that. I mean, actually they are. I could take these two teams right now and play an exhibition. I can do it at this point. So, great way to create leagues, uh, great way to create playoffs. You can even import players if you want, um, which is really, really nice. Um, if we go to the database, so right now this database is consisting of the players that I've just, uh, on these teams, these four teams, that's, that's what's there right now. Um, sortable all the way through who had the most home runs um, you know so far and just these four teams that I've put in um, and we see it's Mike Krukow right so and am I, what am I looking for I'm viewing pictures I don't want to look at pictures I'm looking at batters what am I thinking of um, what am I possibly thinking of I have no idea um, so let me actually exit this and then come back to it right This keeps going to a pitcher's view, but we're going to go to all and all teams. Maybe I just want to look at Pittsburgh. I can do that. There's Pittsburgh and showing um, just pitchers. And if we go over here, let's go over here and let's look at basic batting. There we go. Who is my home run hitter on this team? Glenn Wright and Kai Kai Kyler, each with 13 home runs. Action PC, can I create your own logos and import them into the game? Yep. And how about old stadiums? Oh, man. Perry, you know what, Perry? I should, I'm not going to do this, but I should name this stream after you because you're, you're asking great, great, great questions. So, you want old ballparks? All right. Let's have some fun with that. All right. So, let's go to the LA Dodgers. Right now, down here, Perry you can see Dodger Stadium. But what if I don't want Dodger Stadium? What if I want to take these 1982 LA Dodgers and put them somewhere else? So what I do is first is I, it's a two-step process. This is one of the things that once you get used to it in Action PC, it becomes second nature. Until you get used to it, it's a two-step process. Um, but it's still not bad. So we go to Modify Team. Well, for one thing we can do here first, there's the logos. You want to create your own logos? Go for it. You can assign logos. You can bring in your own. Do whatever. So if you're a graphic artist, you found or you found logos out there on the internet, bring them in. So let's let's say that I want to make the LA Dodgers into the Brooklyn Dodgers. I'm going to press B, which will at least get me down into the B's, and I'm going to look around, and I'm going to see uh, Brooklyn. Uh, now nah, that's the one that comes with the game. Boss. There we go. Let me see. This is Red Sox. Brooklyn, where are you guys? Is this it? Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to sign that logo and watch this. Now it's the Brooklyn Dodgers logo. And this could be anything, right? You're, you're creating whatever logos you want. But we still haven't changed the park. Let's go back to Modified Team again. All right, so right now it's assigned, and this is brilliant. Yes, you can also export to website. Yes, you can. It creates websites for you too. It does everything but make orange juice for you. Uh -huh. um, it also doesn't have an announcer. We'll see that in Baseball for Windows, and that's how I'm going to end that up then with a game with Baseball for Windows. But I'm going to show you something else. But let's we'll stay on this. Notice here that you can select the base year for the team if you want, and then right maybe I might want to take these LA Dodgers and move them back to 1919 I can do that I'm not going to but I'm just showing you some statistics um, normalization I can go up here I can edit anything I want all right um, including the team fine which is new for action PC 2023 but I want to assign them to a park so what I'm gonna do is I am just going to look for Ebbets, and again, clicking in any field, type the first letter, and you go down. There's Ebbets Field, assign team to park, right? And now we're going to go ahead and click OK. And now, here's a version of Ebbets Field. 
And now if we were to start up a game, the 1982 Los Angeles Dodgers will be playing in a very early version of Ebbets Field. That simple. Um, which I'm going to have to remember to change this back. Um, while we're, let me show you something else that this does. And we'll, we'll come back to this. We'll exit this for right now. This is super, super cool. If you go up here to reports, this is new. This is something that um, Out of the Park Baseball 23 does not have. This works both within the context of a game, but also when doing roster analyses, Perry. So let's say we're going to pick a visitor team, and it's going to be our erstwhile L.A. Dodgers, 1979 to 83. And let's pick our home team, and let's make the Giants 86 to 90. So right now you're probably looking at the screen and saying, well, that's really nice, Beatles eternally. I'm seeing um, you know, a batter's last name, whether he's a righty, lefty, or switch hitter. And I'm seeing his plate appearances, home runs, and averages. What's the big deal? right? And also, of course, his position and where he's rated. It's like, so? Big deal. But watch this. So up here we have all the position players for the LA Dodgers but how how would you like to know how they are going to do against San Francisco Giants pitching so if we go batting right here and let's just pick Steve Bedrosian and as soon as I click Bedrosian's name watch this field down here and what happens boom now what do we see we see here for instance a Dusty Baker all right just what just doing the raw stats and everything like that. Um, overall, 22%, 22.5% chance for a hit against um, against Bedrosian, right? A 1.8 chance for a double, uh, two tenths of a, a, a percent chance or whatever, right? 0.2% chance of a triple, two and a half for for a home run. You get it. His percentage that he's going to draw a walk from Bedrosian, strikeout. Where this is nice, not only for setting up, say, against specific pitchers, but also just overall roster analyses. So these numbers are going to change if I go to Brantley. Now all of a sudden this is all changed. In game, let's say you, you want to bring in a relief pitcher. All right, so Steve Garvey's up there, and you want to bring in a reliever, right? And... Um, say Craig Lefferts or whatever. I'm just picking anybody at random. doesn't matter if it's a reliever. You can see how um, and who did I say I was doing this for? Garvey. Let's just say Steve Garvey. How is Garvey going to do against your relief pitcher? Or you bring in that relief pitcher but you're thinking maybe the manager is going to bring in a different pitch hitter. It will show you not only how it will do against that hitter, but any possible hitter, and it works in reverse. You bring in, right, you bring in a pinch hitter, well, right, is he going to do the platoon thing and try to turn his pitcher around? You can make educated, sort of informed decisions based upon percentages of how that hitter will do against any possible pitcher that could come in which is really, really, really nice. And that works in-game um, for making those decisions, but also for roster analyses outside the game. This thing is so feature-rich. But yes, you can definitely create a um, website. Um, you can do insane customized detailed reports, even above and beyond um, what you're seeing here. right? So we can look at league leaders. And again, um, I want to say I want to thank Steve Tate, who has been, and I wish he was here right now. Steve Tate um, is 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 just an absolute wizard, a guru, if you will, um, at Action PC Baseball, and has taught the community a lot. But I just wanted to show you what it could do. But what about this interface? There's a lot going on, admittedly. Um, in, in Action PC Baseball, but if you're used to Out of the Park 2023, which we'll switch to um, right now, here it is. All right, so we just tried to create a league, and we saw how quickly that was done in Action PC. Now we go over to Out of the Park 2023, right? 
so we can do custom game and challenge mode is goofy all right so we can do fictional we can do historical all right um, so let's do this we're gonna do fictional so one of the things is you go through this league creation wizard which is nice and out of the park players are familiar with it and it is nice however you already have to know what you want all right so am I going to be setting up um, 16 teams and two divisions all these kinds of stuff all right um, but maybe I just want to do I can go up here and I'm just going to do some old baseball here right two sub leagues um, one division each there we go so now we're doing baseball pre-expansion but what if I go through all this and I decide oh damn it you know what I want to do 24 teams you've got it you then you have to do all this add this and that or I want to move the Tigers to the National League or the Cardinals to the American League so you saw an action PC baseball 2023 how easy that is to do just drag and drop drag and drop all over the place um, this one not so much um, Smelly Ruskin Geek, what makes me salty is how action PC baseball and out of the park baseball are so much deeper than their hockey counterparts. Um, hockey is my favorite sport, he says, and while I enjoy franchise hockey manager and action PC hockey, they lack fine details. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's right. I, I would also wonder whether that's the nature of the beast when you consider that baseball is the most statistically intensive game. Of, of the four major team sports um, does that have part something to do with it does it also have to do with the fact that I, I've, I've read um, in a number of resources because again my interest is only baseball Perry I'm not really I don't follow I have a passing interest in boxing but that's about it baseball is the sport I love but um, things that I've read about baseball gaming this is by far the largest this is the biggest market in sports and baseball uh, gaming is, is baseball so maybe it makes sense that these companies are developing for baseball primarily you know because it, it, it has the lion's share and I and I, I, I would be glad to find those articles and studies about that this is this is the big thing is baseball so anyhow we've got this set up um, let's go to our next step now remember we're creating ostensibly a fictional universe and we've got to wait for this and it's not liking the fact that I have 3,000 things open even though it's fast now we can just right here go with this and make this completely fictional or as you know I can take another step and go to historical <coughs> team selection and then now what do I have to do I have to go by year. One of the beauties of action pe or out of the park baseball is you get everything, um, every every everything. So, which is cool. I mean, I love it. It's a steal, and you get it all back to 1871 in the National Association, right? I'm not going to build an entire league, but we know this. So there's 1907, and of course we're going to pick the uh, Detroit Tigers, right? So, but you're, you're doing this step by step by step by step. There's a lot more steps to this, but the nice thing about it is, unlike Action PC 2023, everything is installed in this game. But there's still a lot more steps to this, as you know from creating teams. Um, but we're going to go ahead and cancel this, because I don't really want to do that. You guys also know there's a historical exhibition. This is where I think this is better um, than, action, than Action PC 2023. Right now, I can just, if I want to, right out of the rip, I can just do a World Series 1980, and this thing is ready to play. One click, and it's ready to play. To set up a World Series in Action PC 2023, I've got to go through a lot more steps. However, that being said, the flexibility of the engines are what make I think Action PC 2023 ultimately a superior game. And why is that? If I want to do a draft 
at the player level with Action or Out of the Park 2023, querying the database in this thing is insane. It's it's just insane. And what if I don't want to do that, right? You have to. If I want to bring in players one at a time, or I want to bring in a batch of players, I have to use a CSV file, a common or delimited file. There's a kind soul on the Out of the Park forums that, I, however they did it, maybe got this database that resides. There's a couple databases uh, within this game, and they were actually able to extract the data into a common delimited format because you need baseball reference ID, uh, the player's birth year, um, his debut, final year, all that kind of stuff. Well, that's a bit of a pain. So, and that's where Action PC comes to uh, the rescue. So let's bring it back up here. If I wanted to, um, let's say, draft some players onto the Pirates, I can go to Players, Draft Players, and watch how nice this is. This is really cool, and I think this is this is much better. All right, I'm not now again. I'm not using. I should probably be using a larger database. In fact, I will. Let me let me go out of this, and let me go to my Ned McGreevy League, and I'll show you because that is using um, something that's uh, that it's using the baseball history collection. And let me show you how easy this is compared to out of the park baseball um, to do this. And this is not to slam out of the park baseball. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, but let's go to our Ned McGreevy League. Hopefully, this is helpful for some people. I think you should get both. You should have both games. So we created this by using a draft. This is completely a draft league. Um, so obviously, you know, we Willie Keeler didn't play for a team called the Providence Liberty Tree, and Tris Speaker didn't play for the Liverpool Fabs. But how do we do it? Well, I'm just going to bring up just my team, Liverpool. And don't worry, guys, I will get rid of the player, whoever I draft. If I go to player right here, right, or players, and I do draft players, so this is going to go to this baseball history collection, Perry, which is really cool. And it takes a while to load up. This is a mammoth file. This is every player who's ever played the game and is retired. If I go up here to tools and set draft, draft eligibility, right now it's set to 1900 to 1919. But what if I wanted to cheat? And these guys would figure it out. But let's say I wanted to go and I wanted to get players from 1940 um, to 1980. I'm going to click OK. And now this is going to update. Um, I'm trying to persuade you. All right, so he says agrees the baseball market is used. Just trying to figure out how I should go with the, with out of the park 23 for your upcoming season, or should I go with Action PC 2023? Um, I think a lot of it's ease of use. So so how 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 deep how customizable do you want to go, Perry, with your league? If you want deep custom, yeah, I mean ultimately it is both. But if you're to choose one, how deep do you want to go? If you want transparency, if you want complete customizability, and I mean complete customizability, Action PC 2023 is your game. You talked about logos. You talked about ballparks, right? Well, so in Out of the Park Baseball, they do have, you can create your own ballparks, but it's not very robust yet. Um, as far as logos, yeah, there's tons of logo packs you can download out there. Um, old ballparks, if you buy Out of the Park Baseball on Steam, you will you can get that mod um, of all those ballparks from 1901 to present, and they're they're done nicely, but maybe um, maybe that's not enough. Um, maybe you you don't agree with certain ratings on a player or what have you. There's so much. If you want something that you can get super super granular, and you want to create the game the way you want to create it. Action PC 2023 makes it easier, much, much easier. So I would say that um, it will, Robbie, but their focus is a little bit different. Now, I, I will say this, though, Perry. Um, Action PC Baseball is a larger investment. 
depending upon what type of league that you want to do. In out-of-the-park baseball, you have every season right there, and you can set up anything you want. With Action PC Baseball, you've got to buy the seasons. However, Dave Cook has sales. A lot of times, seasons are four, five, six dollars, seven dollars. A full price, I think they're like twelve. And for all the other baseball games out there that you have to buy seasons for, I haven't seen anything um, as low of price. And it's it, it's extremely extremely accurate. Um, so you do have to take that into account. I'm not going to um, sugarcoat it and say you buy um, Action PC Baseball and you can just do everything. But um, if you bought Action PC Baseball and you picked up the Baseball History Collection with it, providing you're not doing um, a season replay, let's say, but maybe you just wanted to do this massive draft league or you wanted to just do players, uh, again, from this, th this I, I selected this year range of 1940 to 1960. These are these players, or 1940 to 1970, I think I picked. What did I pick? I'm sorry. 1940 to 1980, so there's 4,000 players in there to draft from. I can select, I can click on any of these guys. I don't even know who Ed McGee is. No idea. Um, give it a second. There's Ed McGee. Hello, Ed McGee. All right. Well, it ended up picking up Cal Abrams. We can look at him. We can look at his view. There. We can look at him. I didn't even realize. So. This is all in here within this baseball history collection. So, I guess my next question, Perry, is if you're here, what kind, exactly what kind of league do you want to do? And that, and then I, I can give you your answer. Depending upon the league. And while, while I'm waiting for that because of the lag here on YouTube, I will say this, that this game I went all in on, and um, it, it, you know, it took me a number of years to buy everything for it because I never found myself in a position all at once to buy the baseball complete, which is everything in, that you can get in this game. Um, and it's it's an investment, so I had to do it piece by piece by piece. But I have everything every season for this game from 1880 to present, Negro Leagues. Um, I, I I didn't I, I'm not interested in minor league baseball, but I've got everything else on here, um, and it and it I'm not going to kid you. It was it's an investment, but the game's worth it. But if you want to create something with just some great players through history and stuff like that, if you if you get the game, the baseball history collection, and um, another great product is baseball's top 160 teams, that's like super cheap. And then also download for free Steve Tate's um, five-year franchise files, which now there's, uh, I think, 180 teams in that. You could do anything except season replays. And it comes with some, some seasons as well. But not knowing what kind of league you want, it's kind of hard to say. Um, just on a surface level, this is more deeply customizable. Um, or easier to customize than out of the park baseball. But if you can afford both, get both. Maybe do a head to head comparison over the winter. That might be the other one. I know that's not terribly persuasive, but they're both excellent games. If you're on a budget, and if you're doing a season replay, it's out of the park baseball. Um, if you want to pick teams from all kinds of different eras, um, and you don't want to spend the money on the seasons, again, it's out of the park baseball. Um, but that being said, you can do things like this. And we're going to go ahead and close out of that. I'm not going to bring Cal Abrams onto my team. Um, let's go to the this baseball's top 160 teams so you can get a sense of what you can do here if you would go this route. So we're going to do just baseball grades. We're just going to do the National League. And that's going to load this in. All right, so you can see there's just a, a, a crazy, there's 80 teams um, per league in this. And you can create a draft league from this if you want, Perry. So, you know, but you can just look around. There's the 1931 St. Louis Cardinals as they were. 
um, go through this crazy long list. There's the 39 Reds. More into modern baseball. Well, yeah, scroll down a little bit. There's the 1980 Phillies. Um, you can see a lot of these already have ballparks assigned to them. And if you have the images, you're set to go. There's the 86 Mets. This thing, I think, let me look really quickly. So I'm trying to be persuasive, but I'm, I'm also going to be honest. Um, these games are, are very close. Action PC is my favorite, personal favorite, and Out of the Park is an extremely, extremely close second. Alright, so if we go, if I go to the shop, and I'll bring this over too, so you can see it. Don't even know if Perry's still in here, but that's alright. Um, he may come back and watch this later. So we go to Baseball Seasons, um, and let's go to, I believe it's... Uh, the best of collection is it? No, it's not that one. Hang on, do I find it? Because I really, I love. Is it the special collections? So I'm talking about the baseball history collection, um, and he has frequent sales. It's fifty nine dollars. It's a steal. There for thirty five dollars, baseball's one hundred and sixty greatest teams. And you do the math. Um, of how many possible combinations on here, so it would be like 8 choose 160, you're running into a mammoth number here. Um, so good, good stuff right here just with this. So with the game in this, you're probably looking at 50, 60 bucks without buying any additional seasons. Right now, I don't think there is a sale going on. Um, doesn't look like it. Let's just look um, here. Yeah, there is a there. Eight dollars and ninety-seven cents for seasons. So you can do that. You can buy them by decades, which is what I did as I was buying this. So decades are on sale. So for all of 1950s baseball, it's going to cost you fifty-three dollars, and that's that's every team that played in the 50s. You want the 80s? There you go. So the tough sell with action PC baseball is the price point for buying everything that you want in this game. If you got deep pockets, however, there is um, Baseball Complete, and we will I'll show you that one. And I actually do want to buy it, even though I have everything. Um, let me see here. Is it Special Collections? I wish Dave would let me do his... Uh, Is baseball complete still even available? Wow, it might not be, which is too bad because I, I I do want to buy it even though I have everything. Um, so yeah, because the baseball history collection is different. But let's look at that just for a second. All right, it comes with all these subsets. So there's the master. And then it, you start going down. Now here you have the 1500 absolutely cream of the crop. And you can create an infinite number of leagues just there. Um, this is going to bring in down to like maybe average players. And then this is everybody, even Moonlight Graham. But I guess the question would be is how much do you want to spend? And what do you want to do? Um, there we go. Um, so, like, if you want the whole 19th century, hundred dollars. So it's it's not cheap. But compared to, if you want a real shock, just to give you um, a comparison. And I'm way off topic now, but that's all right. Having fun. Um, there are people here that love this game, PC Replay Baseball. Um, I'm not one of them. I'm sure it's a good game, but I couldn't figure out a lot of what's going on. All right. Um, but if we go here, PC Baseball Products, Season Prices. All right. So Dave, Co Dave Cook Sports, if we go back to Seasons, and I'll just pick 1960, Regular price, 15 bucks on sale for 897. These guys rarely have sales, and you're gonna pay 27 dollars a season for 
all these seasons, and they don't have everything available. That's another thing to consider. So I think this is th again, it's a lot of damn baseball. Um, but like their memorable matchups teams. All right, let's round it down to 25 because my math sucks. So what? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So there's 150 bucks to get um, a smaller set of teams, of great teams, than is going to cost you um, for uh, baseball's top 160 teams. Yes, yeah, so this is 35 bucks versus, what did we say, 150 This is also why I stay away from this. It's just... I am one of those guys that has to buy everything for a gamer as much as I can, and I don't see how. Why? Why would I spend twenty six ninety five here, when I have an engine just as accurate over here, for at no sale fifteen dollars? But again, I I don't know what kind of league you want to do. Anyhow, let me get PC pre replay off my screen and get this off my screen. All right, so assuming maybe Perry's not here, so I'm going to go ahead and go on with what I was going to do about talking about play-by-play -play and interface. All right, and we'll just stay right in here. So lots of menu choices. These down in the red are going to be a lot of the stuff that you're going to probably use most commonly, including comparing teams, for instance. So we'll just, I'm, I'm just sort of messing around before we get into a play-by-play -play here. And giving it a minute. And these are all the teams in this National League file by Dave Cook Sports. And that's a lot of teams, right? And we can go to real stats and we can start comparing. We click up here of all these teams on here, right? Stolen bases, well, it's going to be the 1912. Uh, New York Giants. But look at the 85 St. Louis Cardinals right there. I think what what's nice about this is that, that not only these just out of the box easy reports, but also um, and it, and a very easy to use interface, but also the customized reports that you can get into that are insane. That all these reports can be bundled up and generate a website to send to the members of your league. So you can definitely do that. Um, Maybe somebody, um, you know, once this is all set up in divisions, maybe they just want to see for their team. You can you can break down just by team if you want. Um, you can do let's do a let's do a pitching report, and um, so there we go. So earned run average, no surprise there. The 1907 and the 1906 Cubs, and then um, you know who sucketh in comparison, the 2007 Rockies. Um, again, not I, I don't know. Now, and remember too that any player, any player in any database, just like Out of the Park 23, except when you're creating tournaments um, in this game or World Series, I could, I, if I wanted to, I could release all of these players into one major draft pool and do just one crazy draft by a player if I wanted to do that. I can drag any of these teams into a league if I want. Um, it's it's pretty much limitless. But again, not knowing what type of league you want to do, um, I don't know. I, I just think that if you want freedom, this is the game. But it's going to cost. And you don't have to buy everything. You know, you might be somebody that's just into 1980s baseball. So you buy the game, the 1980s decade, you're ready to rock, plus the tons of homebrews that are out there for this game. Good stuff. Can't, but it's, it's, yeah. All right, so we go to play. We can do things like playoff games. We can do an exhibition game, scheduled league games. We're just going to do an exhibition game because I want to, just talk about play-by-play -play now. All right, so visiting team, let's take the Colorado Rockies, and let's take 
and I can switch out of this and go into another league or another file if I want. I'm not stuck here um, against the 72 Reds. Does that sound like fun? Let's do it. Now, you're seeing Camden Yards in there because I haven't assigned ballparks here yet. So that's the only reason you're seeing that. You're not seeing proper logos because you do have to assign logos and ballparks. All right, so we're going to click play. And I'm just going to do a computer lineup. And uh, am I going to do a computer lineup or not? I probably don't have this. There we go. And then I'm just going to throw in a pitcher. Doesn't really matter because I'm not going to play out the whole game. We'll just put in this Jeff Francis guy. You have to forgive me. I don't know a lot about um, the Colorado Rockies. <laughs> So this will let this organ stop playing. Oh, I'm glad this turned out this way, actually. So I can show you something else. Obviously, first game that we've demoed today that has sound. You can hear the crowd in the background. And I have to say that the sample looping on this is um, pretty damn good. I don't know if Dave Cook is a musician. I am. And I think he did a great job with the sample loops in this game. So this little game right up here, this Welcome to Riverfront Stadium, da 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 you can actually, you, you can customize down to this level. It's awesome. So we're going to play ball, gives you the weather report, all that stuff. But play ball! if you haven't set up ballparks, you're going to see something nuts like this. You're saying, well, why the hell would I want to do that? Well, this is the this is what we call the Zen part of it all. So we go to display, and we go to park layout. I can set up this park, right? So if I do reset labels, that's going to at least get them down close to the field. And all you're going to be be doing here is clicking and dragging. And um, I I should have I should have actually picked. Um, should have actually picked something where I already had ballparks assigned. But this will show you how you can do this. So you're clicking, dragging these guys around. Again, if you're an out-of-the-park player, you're saying, why do I want to do this? Well, guess what? You can do this in out-of-the-park as well. I don't know if many people are aware of that, but in out-of-the-park baseball, you can reposition players in that game as well. Um, and it's basically the same process as what I'm doing right now. This will just take a second. Because, you know, you want it to look nice. So that way we can get you a little play-by-play -play in this game. But I'm glad, I'm actually glad this came up. All right. And we'll put grandstands back there. Going to put the catcher back here. Um, okay, our grandstands look good here. we got to set our fence heights. This should go in foul territory here. And, by the way, you can also resize of the window. Makes it a little easier to work with with these fence heights, right? This is the lower part of the fence. This is the upper side. So, of course, the big question is: Do you want to even be bothered by with something like this? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I see something coming in the chat. Baseball. Thank God I'm saved. Big Clue coming in there. How you doing, Big Clue? We have a uh, chatter here. I'm not sure if he's still here, Perry trying to decide whether to stick with out of the park baseball 23 or go to action PC 2023 um, the consensus in the chat is actually play both um, but I'm not sure what type of league Perry wants to go because he's thinking about switching and being an adopter of this game and so what started out to be a talk about interface and sound has turned into um, a bit of a comparison between the two big players out there action PC 2023 this fine game. And they are both fine games in their own right. And I think we're ready to go to play this game. So we're going to save it, and now everybody's going to pop into position. So down here, on the lower right corner, is the play-by-play. -play. So there's no audio play-by-play -play unless you, you turn on the awful um, Microsoft narrator, which I want to make sure he's not on here, because he's awful. Good. Never use him, never use him. And we'll put Colorado at this is going to be the play-by-play -play box. This is customizable. 
Yes, the correct answer to the question is yes, exactly. And I know Perry's asking us to kind of persuade him, but I, I, I really, I, I can't. Because I've bought everything for Action PC Baseball, if a gun were held to my head and I had to choose, then it would be this game. Um, but if I didn't, I, I would buy. I would just buy both games. As is what I've done. Is what I did. So this took me, you know, the collection I have in this game took me five years to build up because I just didn't have the money all at once to plunk down for the Baseball Complete Collection. Anyhow. So what is cool about this is we'll show you after uh, we'll go through, and I'm not going to announce a game. Play by play, completely customizable in this game, just as it is in Digital Diamond Baseball. Um, we're going to go ahead in the computer do both things. As you're going to see down here, the play by play starting. You can adjust the speed of that play by play. By the way, it's pretty good. And I'll read it to you in a second. I don't use it. Steve does. Um, I really, really don't use this too much. But if I go here to R, I can replay this text list. And I'll read this to you. So we already did the welcome to blah, blah, blah. So Tavares to face Nolan. Nolan with the first pitch. Tavares hits a line drive toward the right center. Um, Haig hustling over. He cuts it off. Tavares rounds first. He's going for two. The throw comes in from Haig. Tavares hits the dirt. Safe. Double. Every bit as good of a play-by-play -play as you're going to find in Diamond Mind and Out of the Park 8. <coughs> is right here. <coughs> and you can customize it. Really, really nice. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let me see if I can just... I want to get to a really, really neat feature. Can I go and Where's that zoom? There's a thing called zoom that I can um, go to. And where is it? Yeah, zoom. There it is. So if I go to zoom, let's go to the end of the sixth inning. So it's playing it out. Zoom is complete. Another nice thing that this has that out of the park baseball lacks. So when you're doing a game in out of the park baseball, you want to know what the player did his last time in that. Well, sometimes the play-by-play -play and out of the park baseball will tell you, and sometimes it won't. So now we have um, your Vittoriaba up here, and he's one for two. And sometimes in the play-by-play -play that you see up in the middle of the screen and, and out of the park 23, it will say, um, had a single his last time up as the pitch is coming in. All I have to do over here is hover, and I see that Back in the second, he grounded to second, and in the fifth, he had a solo home run with 382 feet, um, uh, making it uh, Cincinnati 7, Colorado 2. This is a brilliant feature right here. Just boop, and you're ready to rock. Don't know what that's doing up there. So um, it's, lo it's looking, asking for something. Um, let me just go ahead and just pitch to him. And Toriaba swings, grounded up the middle. Uh, Concepcion goes to his left, gathers into Perez at first, and Toriaba's retired. But I can call that just by watching this chalkboard. So this is also the first game that we've seen, because we haven't gotten into an Out of the Park 23 game that has animation. But we don't need to show the animation. You guys know about that game. Um, good sounds. Steve Tate's working on narrators for this thing. Um, which I hope it works out because we're going to get to the, the to the king of baseball narration games in, in a few minutes. And it is the king. And it comes from a very old baseball company. Arnold Hunter, welcome in. Um, played his first game with baseball for Windows. was disappointed with only receiving four different playing fields and four managers. I did receive three seasons. Um, Arnold, we'll talk about that, so hang tight on that, all right? Um, hang tight on that. We are getting to Appa. It's coming. Appa is the king. Smelly Wrestling Geek already knows that. It is the king of play-by-play -play. for a really special reason, even though it's a little bit jarring. Um, no, Arnold, don't be... 
there's we're, I'm going to turn you on to all kinds of amazing stuff, and you're going to have so much baseball for Windows that your head will spin just like um, the Regans did in The Exorcist. So hang tight, my friend. Hang tight. Turn you on to a site called Digital Skybox. Okay. Um, a lot going on. Um, nice things. If I want to look at, um, if I want to look at uh, the uh, scoring by inning. Okay. With out of the park baseball, I have to go out of the game and go to other places. I don't here. If I go up here, let me hide this. I got to sneak around this way. So I'm looking here and I'm seeing that Cincinnati in the bottom of the second scored five runs. If I go down here, look at that. Just by hovering, I see exactly what happened. Out of the Park Baseball 2023 does not do this. Not in this fashion. Um, Colorado scored one in the first. How'd that happen? There it is. Really nice. You can actually change the weather in this game if you want, which again, if you're wondering, geez, how would these players do on a, a really hot, humid day at such and such a ballpark? Go for it, because it takes park and weather effects into account. That's not just window dressing. I know out of the park does the same thing, but I can do all that stuff from one screen. Hovering there just like that, here's the box score with the game in progress out of the park baseball, I've got to go to another screen to do it. I'll just go ahead and hide this. Um, player ratings. Well, we're seeing here that Joe Morgan is rated an 8, but I want to get granular. There we go. Now I can look at uh, Joe Morgan's strats. The stats real and in this game, or in the replay. Over here, this player results box. The cards and dice guys, this is brilliant. Because now that we're in later innings, we see that Clint Barnes is up. Um, no chance for a home run, really, which means there's no chance for a run to score. But we can see here that he has a 17.2% chance to get a hit off of Gary Nolan. A 6.6% chance for a double. Well, think about the cards and dice that you play. What are you really doing? When you're looking at those cards, right, you're saying, geez, I'm hoping, what is it? The game is a 66 isn't that that's a, that's APA, I believe if you six to six you got a home run based on whatever park factors everything this is similar to that so you're you're, you're making your decisions like geez, I'm bringing up this card and I see on the batter's column in Strat that if this is rolled this is what's going to happen well this is kind of a nice sort of midway point for that and again every player right is carded here so who am I at right so. Let me, let's look at, uh, oh no, I don't want to do that. Let's go back, and let's look at Cincinnati's roster. And let's look at hitters, and um, let's just look at, uh, what, Pete Rose? Why not? Double click him. Something you cannot do in Cards and Dice. Um, and something that is offered in, in Out of the Park 23. I can see Pete Rose's real stats for 1972. And though we only have one game, you know, just in this game so far, what's he done? I can see that. Um, I can I can get down to just, an, again, an Apple Park 23, granular level. I can, how, how is the AI going to manage just Pete Rose?
sorry, my, my mic fell down. So I was just going to say, um, you have all these stats in here that's going on during the replay comparing to what Pete Rose did in 1972. And um, ratings down here. What was his longest hitting streak? Grand slams. Did he hit for the cycle yet throughout the season? This is going to keep you informed how he did situationally at home on the road, day, night, pinch, clutch. It's a deep, deep game and everything all available on one screen, which is really, really nice. Really nice. And then, as I said, you click Rose on the web and boom, you're going to get all kinds of stuff. Go to Baseball Reference, Baseball Almanac, whatever, right from here. It just does a Google search for you. So we talk about interface. Um, we're going to go ahead and exit this game. Um, exhibition games aren't saved, so it doesn't matter. Um, a lot of what you're going to be using commonly are going to be up here, and there's a lot. Um, but it's up here that you start getting tons of menu options. Um, and it is not so again, as Steve said, and it's the same with Out of the Park 23, with this much power comes a lot of depth. So um, Action PC is going to take a little time to get used to. Um, but it's really, really, really good stuff. Um, we can even set up right our, our, our entire game preferences. Um, we can go, for instance, to, I believe it's rules, or is it setup? Which one is it? Um, there's one of these things because I wanted to show you something here that also out of the park baseball does not do and I'll be damned if I can find it because I've watched Steve do this a billion times um, rules it's rules there we go so I think this is something that is absolutely huge in action PC baseball 2023 so a lot of cards and dice players and a lot of digital players like to play as played schedules right and as played right so here this mode can be used for seasons that um, include complete transactions rosters this is going to be the active players for the game taking into account real life injuries trades signings call-ups demotions real life lineups and starting pitchers will be used so if you wanted uh, if you want to do an, a season replay this is your huckleberry right maybe you want to do all transactions but down here this is super cool and can actually make one season infinite replayable this is the alternate reality mode um, very quickly um, it enables a new style of season replay which provides additional levels of st strategic depth and this mode results are driven by hidden ratings rather than by raw statistics these ratings are based on actual stats so it's not like the, the game engine is just going to do something absolutely nuts, right? It's still going to be based on the player's actual stats and other factors as well. So it's not going to all of a sudden, you know, make Babe Ruth hit only three home runs. That's not going to happen, all right? So rather, but, but, but rather than by raw statistics, readily buff. These ratings are based on actual stats, but with some random variation. For example, a 300 hitter in real life will usually be rated to hit about 300 but will sometimes be better and sometimes worse. Ratings are generated each time a new season begins, so no two replays will ever be the same. System encourages more realistic manager and general manager decisions. For example, if a real-life 270 hitter hits only 240 in the first month of the season, the manager might consider moving him down in the batting order or giving the backup player more playing time. In other modes, the manager would know that the backup who hit 260 and real life is, all else being equal, simply not as good. Ratings are generated for batting average, walks, strikeouts, home runs, doubles, triples, and durability for both batters and pitchers. This is cool. I've never seen this. And if there is something else in another digital game, I've never seen it. And certainly, I don't think there's one in any cards and dice game. And this is brilliant because you're kind of going into it. And let's say just we'll use 1927, that Hori Olive example, H-O-A-R-Y example. Um, so 
Babe Ruth's going to hit around 60 home runs. He might not. He might hit just 47. He might not perform just as well. And you've got to, you've got to kind of play with that, kind of manage with that, whatever. And I think that's great. Um, you can also do for league era. You can break this down by league and by year All, and into the future up to 2050. Um, what do you want to do with rosters? There's so much here. You can you can set your opening rosters. You can set usage rules here. Um, again, not saying you can't do this in out of the park baseball, but this is everything in one screen and just as easy as when we started to set up um, our uh, our little draft league. All right, so that is Action PC Baseball. If you want more in-depth information. Subscribe to Steve Tate's channel. He goes into this in his virtual unboxing of Action PC 2023 into incredible depth into this program. And by the time you come out of it, you're going to know how to do a lot of stuff. I'm not even getting into stuff like reports or anything like that because reports are insane. Just insane. The stuff that you can do. Um, you want to break down your replay to standings by date to whatever you want. Um, it's in here. Who's injured right now? Whatever. I don't. This isn't an ongoing league, so I can't really generate reports here yet. Um, internet head-to-head -head play out of the park has it. All right. Let's leave this. And if we go to out of the park baseball 23, which is awesome, um, we want to look at. Um, we're, we're talking about play-by-play. -play. I have the 1912 World Series right now in this exhibition league. We're going to go ahead and load it up. And no, guys, we're not going to play it all out, so don't worry. And let's look at its play-by-play -play as it goes. Play-by-play uh, -by -play is not synced um, in this as well. This has been a long-time issue with Out of the Park Baseball. I'm trying to get the play-by-play -play to sync to the action on the field. Um, I give them a lot of credit um, for how far they've come to take this real-time animation and try to sync it up with real-time play. That's going to be something that's easier to do on action. In fact, in action PC, it matches perfectly. Perry says, sorry, it took me a while to get back. That's okay. Um, you want customization. So you and your friends created your own logo for our teams. Can we import them? You only want the 2022 seasons? Well. Again, I, I think, my friend, the answer is going to be if you already have Action PC Baseball um, or if you already have Out of the Park Baseball, if you want to get the basic game, and yes, you can bring in your own logos in, um, in Action PC. You definitely can do that. That is not a problem. And you just want the 2022 season and you don't want anything else. All right? Um, then basically you are going to be looking at just go to the baseball game itself so you can get this in the basic package um, and let's see what comes with the basic package um, is not going to be your so you're going to spend a little bit more on this um, there you go so you're I would say getting so it's on sale right now for $44.10, so just a little bit more than Action PC Baseball. You will get the 2022 baseball season, Perry, 1969, 1938, 1921 Negro League season, the 1890 baseball season, and baseball's all-time top 20 teams. Ready to play with a 154-game schedule. That's a hell of a lot of baseball for $44.10. You can easily bring in your logos. Create your draft league. Can you buy Epa for Windows as a digital download? Unfortunately, Tape Saturator, it is only um, a delivery on DVD. So you have to borrow or buy a cheap ass DVD um, online for like 20 bucks. You only need a DVD player once to install the game. That's great. We drafted off the last season of baseball, so yes, 2022. There you go. Again, it's going to be you're, you're paying a little bit more money than action than out of the park 2023, 
but yes, you can create. If, if I had time right now, I'd fire up Photoshop, make a logo, and show you how easy it is to just bring it. In fact, all you're doing is you store your logos, Perry. I'll bring up my um, my file um, explorer really, really quickly and show you if I go to my C drive, DK Sports Data, Baseball, Team Logos. Look at that. Let me let me get this up here for you. These logos that you'll be looking at once um, everything kind of switches around that I'm scrolling through, and these are nowhere near all the logos available out there or your own logos that you want to do. These do not come with the game. These are all imported. So, um, yep, it will definitely fit the bill. And if you like the ease of use of Action PC Baseball, I think you'll be um, really, really, um, I think you'll be pleased with it. I really do. Yes, they are in JPEG, which is also nice. Also nice that they are in JPEG format. And um, YouTube is just doing weird things because on the screen that I'm monitoring, and I have very fast internet here, this is still showing um, out of the park baseball, unfortunately. So, but yep, there is. Awesome, he says. So with Action PC, I can create my league season. Um, Yep, and you can export to a website. What I would suggest, Perry, is um, going to Steve's Tate. You know, Robbie, could you do me a favor if you're here still? I hope you are. I know I have a lot of mods in here, but I usually get, get Robbie to do some of the heavy lifting here. Robbie, if you could please go to Steve Tate's channel and specifically find a link to the virtual. Thank you. I know. You see the logo's not out of the park. Don't know what's going on. Anyhow, Robbie, if you could do me a favor, please. Um, could you go to Steve Tate's channel, find the virtual unboxing video, and put that link in here um, for Perry Rubino? Then maybe he can sort of go through it and um, kind of see what Steve's doing, because Steve is going to go a, a lot more in-depth into Action PC and what it can do, Perry. I think you'll really like it. Um... It's it's it is a little tricky, so tape saturator, because I know I that's you know I'm I'm European also I'm living in America now, but when I ordered the newest version of um, the baseball for Windows, it was it was not terribly cheap. MV, I don't know what your postage cost you. Um, Um, Aaron, Aaron says, I highly doubt if MVDA, which is the speech program I've used, would work with Appa Baseball, but Narrator might. So, Perry, down there in the chat, Robbie Wartberg, one of my star mods here, hmm. has put a link directly to Steve Tate's channel. Oh, there we go. Now it's finally catching up. Thanks, YouTube. Um, and it's, it's a longer video, but Steve Tate is absolutely brilliant, the way he describes everything. Um, he'll go way in depth into this game, and I think down the road, Perry, I think you're gonna you're gonna like action PC baseball so much that you're gonna find yourself. Well, damn, he's having yet another sale. I'm gonna buy a few more seasons, whatever, just to play for yourself. Um, but all those logos now, um, again, they're still on my screen. Those do not come with the game. Those are all easily imported, and you can bring these up into any program. Right, so the dimensions in these JPEG files are 140 by 140. If you're an artist, have at it, and you know it's 140 by 140. Save them as JPEGs, assign them to a team, and you are ready to rock. It's that simple. And Out of the Park Baseball used to have a logo creator in it, and for some reason they took it out. I don't know why. I remember in Out of the Park 16, I was creating logos, and I don't know why, but they're gone now. Um, smelly Ruskin, beware, it's easy to get addicted to buying Action P seasons. Dude, yes, uh, I'll have to show you my, my, well, my directory is as bad as Steve's, and I'm sure as bad as yours, it's, it's megalithic. All right, so that is our um, longer four-way foray into um, Action PC Baseball. So, yeah, I'm nowhere near close to the amount of logos a lot of other guys have here, period. I only have 861. So, bam. All right. 
Uh, we're going to talk about play by play. We're going to jump into the 1912 World Series here really quickly. Um, Perry, Perry Bruno says they have logos in Out of Park Baseball, created his own and uploaded to it, but he also plays games live and posts to Twitch. Nice! Um, I don't go to Twitch usually, but I'll look for your name over there. If you if you broadcast live on Twitch, I think that would be a blast. Alright, let's go to game action. And for those of you that play Out of the Park Baseball, all of this is going to look familiar. And this stream has gone pretty long already. Wow. Alright, so here we are. I don't even know where we are. It's 2 nothing Boston. Alright. So as we know, we've been talking about as far as interface goes. Before we even get into sound and play-by-play. Play-by-play is going to happen up here. You guys also know you can do all your play choices right here. I just have this AI managing both teams. Right? But if I want to go to view, right, go to options, if I want to look at that box score, I click box score, then I get this with all these tabs, which is fine. But, you know, game log, it's all there. But the thing is, 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 is what I think that they need to work on, is I want to know what Heine Wagner did. Well, right now, with him up here, if I, if I just mouse over him, of course, I get what he basic stats he did in 1910, 1911, 1912, but I have no idea what he did except in this game he's 0 for 1. So I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so Meyer sets up the target here for the Giants. Um, count two balls, no strikes on Heine Wagner. Crandall peers in, has the sign. Here is the one out delivery. And swung on, and this one will make foul territory. And now you can see up here, here's the play-by-play, -play and it's not, it's not synced. So let's go to, just so you can see that again, I'm not even going to call it this time, Greg Otris Speaker. All right, so Crandall brings up Speaker. So he's 0 for 1 after flying out, we know that. And so we're seeing the swing, delivers a 3-2 pitch, the swing, pop to right, Murray has it sized up and makes the catch near the foul line. Boston third is over, nothing across. That's pretty good play-by-play. -play. I actually think that the play-by-play -play in Out of the Park 8 was better than this. Only because now you can see all the action on the field. There's no guesswork here. And again, I don't know if you guys are seeing Out of the Park baseball um, or if you're seeing the logos. So, whatever. Perry, thank you so much, man. He says you're awesome. Love it, this. Well, thank you so much. So, so very, very much. Um, so, I, I'm not going to keep playing out this game. I'm going to save it for a night that Ken is here, and we'll finish this World Series at 1909. Um, you can go into the settings in Out of the Park Baseball, and you do kind of have to play with it, but you can get this play-by-play, -play to sync up more closely with the on-field action. It's not always going to sync up. Um, I think with their focus now on these real-time graphics, the play-by-play -play really um, isn't going to make a big deal. So if we're to read it, so that will bring up Spreaker after 0 for 1, flying out to Murray in the first. Crandall winds, delivers the 3-2 pitch, the swing popped to right. Murray has it sized up, makes the catch near the foul line, the bo or 1912 Boston third is over, nothing across for Boston, and the Red Sox remain in front, 2 nothing. So it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a little bit asynchronous, whereas in Action PC, you can sync it perfectly. Still kind of a little bit of an art to try to do it here. So let's back out of this, and um, we are just going to exit. There we go. So this game is still in progress. And we're going to go ahead and leave out of the park baseball. And now we're going to do a couple fun games with narration. All right. Um, Perry Rubin said, uh, Perry Rubino says, I'm addicted to this stuff. I had a league um, 25 or more years ago. Do I remember Micro League Baseball? That was the first thing I talked about on this stream two hours ago. I absolutely 
remember um, Micro League Baseball. What a brilliant game it was. What a brilliant game it was. Loved it. And I had the general manager and owner's disc. Sorry for all the um, icons, guys. I had the general manager and owner's disc. Do you remember that one, Perry? You could create your own teams and um, all that kind of stuff. Oh, my God. Yes. Way ahead of its time and on 38K of memory. 38 thousand bytes of free memory shorter than an email smaller than an image file yep you did the same thing Perry we got to talk some more baseball buddy and then you move on to Earl Weaver baseball which you could edit players you could build your own ballparks good god yep all right now the next one that we're gonna do if you guys are familiar with um which I'll show it to you really quickly. It doesn't really have much of a play-by-play. -play. So everybody knows Baseball Mogul. Everybody knows Baseball Mogul. There it is. Um, for play-by-play, -play, forget it. It sucks. All right. So we're going to resume this Pittsburgh part. But I just want to show you. All right. So there we go. And why I'm hanging out in commissioner mode is anybody's guess. Um, Let's t first talk about interface. The reason is we're going to segue in to an older product by this developer that had really cool narration and was actually a competitor um, at the time for Baseball for Windows. So this is Baseball for Mo Baseball Mogul. Um, this was, as you guys know, again, this was a competitor to um, Out of the Park Baseball back in the day. I don't think it so much is now. Um, unless you're into playing like finances and stuff, which I don't. All right. So let's, you know, again, pretty nice interface. Clay does understand interfaces. Um, importing player photos into this is really easy. It's an automatic process. Um, you can also see too that um, with these types of ratings and stuff like this, that there was definitely some inspiration, if you will for, um, uh, you know, from Out of Park Baseball. You can also manage each player, right? How you, How is the AI going to handle Maz? You know, and this comes from the next game we're going to talk about. This is directly from the next game that we're going to talk about, as a matter of fact. This little slider thing. So keep this in mind when I show you the next game we're going to talk about, all right? And hopefully this isn't terribly boring. Let's go to our calendar and let's play. Um, we're going to play this in play by play mode versus the Cubs. All right. Um, no, I don't want to turn off commissioner mode. All right. So here we are. And we're going to click done. And done. And done. And I keep clicking done. There we go. So, again, player pictures are right here. If you're looking for a play-by-play, -play, this is what you're going to get, all right? I mean, I could try to call this, but not a lot of point. So Mordecai Brown, Hannes Wagner, we're going to bat. And you can play, by the way, as a player, so you have different modes up here. Play strictly as a general manager, walk the game. You can manage and can be a field manager. You can be a player and actually pitch and bat. I, I don't really care about that. We're going to leave this here. All right, bat. Here's your play-by-play. -play. It's a play result. And up here, what you get is Hannes Wagner grabbed at the shortstop, and George Grantham is bat. We can see here um, that uh, pitch number two was put into play. That's pretty much it. Um, a lot of stuff that you can do with this thing. Um, I think it's a decent baseball sim, but it's not one, it, it's got some accuracy issues, but it's not bad. Um, this would not be my first choice. I buy it every year because I try to just support, uh, you know, Clay's work. It's pretty cool. Um, as far as interface, I can grab a box score, but the box score just popped up in a web browser over in the other side. And there we can see Pittsburgh and Chicago and what's going on in the game thus far. So shades of out of the park eight, which we talked about before, right? 
So, the only reason I wanted to do this as a segue um, is into the next game. So, we're going to go ahead and... Can I just exit out of the game? Uh, I'm just going to save it. Don't know why. But save it. Yep. And we're going to exit. And then we're going to get into the next one. And this is going to be fun because we're building up to a game that's very, very special, I think. All right. So the developer of Baseball for Windows, Clay Dreslov. Really, really good guy. He's been around for ages. I don't know how many of you have played Tony La Russa Baseball, and specifically Tony La Russa Baseball 3 on the PC. Excellent game. A lot of fun. And what was the one thing that it featured? Narrators. Um, I can't remember the name of the two narrators right now in Tony Lewis of Baseball 3. What they did as they were developing that game, they decided to release what we would call a DLC these days. And it was all these past baseball seasons. And it proved so popular that um, it became its own product. Yeah, it's his first solo effort, right? I like clay. It's good stuff. And it, there is a lot of fun. There's, well, there's, there is a sort of direct predecessor, Robbie, and you've already seen it on my channel. Um, this was not solo developed, but clay was one of the developers on this classic. So you guys ready? Here we go. Let's do this. very nice. Clay's very cool and his wife is awesome. Clay's really nice, man. Yep, he's one of the developers of this. See there, it's 1995. All right, and here we are. And this has some nice little ambient music um, going with, uh, or if you want to play Winter, turn it on. I'm going to try to immerse you into the old-time baseball feel, which we're going to turn off. So here it is. Clay, Clay Dresloff is indeed one of the developers, and let me see if we can find him here in the credits. Where are you, Clay? He's in here somewhere. I, I, I can't find his name right now, but he is one of the developers of this game. Let's go back. So you can look for him later if you want. So here is old time baseball. This was brilliant, man. I oh my god, when I bought this, I was like, yes. Um, what can you do with it? A lot. So remember, this was originally an add-on product, right? So the seasons that you're going to see in here was really an add-on to Tony La Russa Baseball Three. Um, and then Stormfront Studios make made it its own product. What happened to Stormfront? The Evil Empire Electronic Arts is what happened to Stormfront Studios, unfortunately. But what can you do in this game before we even get to a game? Well, we can do a fantasy draft. We can look at stadium histories. Um, for, we can create an entire baseball universe. And you can go down to the player level in this game, the team level. You can edit. So baseball universes are what we think of as league files and out of the park and in action PC baseball. We can add, remove teams to visual alignments. What can we do in the season? Play league games, start new seasons, schedules, league schedules, standings, statistical leaders, games of note. It will do an all-star matchup for you. Manager tendencies. You can set manager tendencies. Remember I showed you guys? You're going to see that here um, in a moment. Um, you can create teams, man, from scratch. Help 
it's got a nice help file to it. Um, let's do an ex let's look at this exhibition game just to show you what's in this. And I know um, that you guys are probably still hearing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" blasting at you. So, um, Big Clue says um, this was the one that got away from me. Yeah, Beatles. He says. A turn Lurser 2 was my favorite sim and came out just as life got busy for me. I never got a chance to play with old time baseball. It is still out there. It is definitely still out there. And um show you how to find it for five a dollar. Or even cheaper if we figure out how to hook it up. I'll this thing's abandoned where I'll send it to you. So at first blush you would say, damn, that's not a lot of teams. Well, Haha, <laughs> there's a lot of teams. All right, this is just out of the box if you want to play an exhibition game, and you can set this up any way you want. But you can see some of the. There's even a federal league team in here, the I Indianapolis. Um, I forget the name of the. What are they? The Packers or something like that. There's Negro League stars here. There's everything, but that's that's. We're just not going to do that, man. We're going to hit escape. What about a fantasy draft? What can we do in a fantasy draft? Well, you'll see. Okay, we can go to our draft setup, go to our team pool. And I can keep adding teams to this, right? Can do that. Let's um let's exit draft. Let's go to the very very main screen. All right. And let's go to season and let's, or let's go to League, and let's load and erase universe. All right, so right now you're seeing this test. That's what I've done. There's an all-time, which is out of the box. There's 1917, 1906, two seasons I'm working on. When I click the magic CD-ROM, look at this. Negro Leagues, and then 1871. And this game, so cool, right? And, and the only thing you're going to have problems with this thing is it's going to scroll fast. Look, there's the Union Association. There's 1884 on its own, and then there's the Union Association. And so it's got all these other leagues. There's the Players League from 1890, but you also have the regular 1890 season as well. They're all in here. There's the Federal League, 1914, 1915. And then this goes from 18, what, 1871 to 1981, and then there's an additional uh, disc that has um, universes that take it up, I think, to 1990. There's a lot of baseball on here. One of the big, big selling points of this thing, though, is the baseball time machine. So let me show you that, and then we'll actually let it uh, play out an inning or two. So we go to an exhibition game. Let's do a visiting team. Let's take the, um, let's just play the, the, the Cardinals and the, the um, Red Sox of 1946, okay? This is really cool and pretty amazing for its time, I think. And um, if it's the one that got away, guys, you can find it. And the good news, you don't have to configure DOSBox to make this thing run. It's ready to rock right out, right off the rip. And 11 people in here for this boring long lecture. Man, oh man, I'm gratified, thank you. So, hey, Cousin Ken is in here. And we don't know where our Steve Tate is, but hopefully he will make it in. So check this out. I've just picked two teams from 1946, but maybe I want to see how they're going to play in the dead ball era. I can just do that. I can go to the quote-unquote Babe Ruth era. I can play them in their own era. I can play them in modern baseball, normalized up to 1994. We can do all-time average, so essentially neutralize. Right? Kind of what you can do in action PC baseball. I can do um, an era average, or I can select um, specific years, um, which I'm not going to do. So we'll just play them in their time, because I want to talk about play-by-play. -play. This thing over here, though, will tell you about the time machine. Mathematically levels the statistical playing field between different years or eras or baseball history. For example, a hitter from the dead ball era performed very differently if brought forward into the 1950s. Now you can simulate competition between players and, and teams with, from different eras with unprecedented accuracy. 
Select a specific year to adjust ball player's performance standards accordingly. Selecting an era will reference average performance standards of all the years of that era, which we have that in Action PC. You can go to an actual year or pick a decade or what have you. Okay, but um, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to play ball. Now, there's two narrators in this game, unlike the king that we're going to get to. Two narrators. So, if you play this game, I suggest you select Mel Allen. He actually um, says more of the names. Leave everything pretty much um, the way it's set here, and click Done. Up here, if you just want to manage only, we're going to let the computer manage Boston. I'm going to manage St. Louis, but I could also have the computer manage both teams. Input is fine. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and I can set these to, or I can set this to mouse. Do I want to play one pitch mode? I can, but I'm not going to. Um, do I want sound effects? Of course. Do I want the announcer? Absolutely. Quick off the field? Yes. Music? Nah. Do I want errors? Sure. Do I want a DH? Never. That's a sin. I can set this as a night game. If you want ultra offense and you want to go completely off the charts, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Auto fielding, running, throwing, you can do that. Set your batter, batter view, pitcher view, home team view, visiting. I'm just going to leave it like this. I can select the ballpark I'm going to play in if I want. And this comes with uh, 16 ballparks. And what they did here, which is really, really nice, is they were able to get the blueprints for these ballparks. And remember, guys, this is before 3D, really. Um, and they were actually able to create these, and these ballparks are pretty nice. Um, viewing stadium, I think, is going to be weird. Um, yeah, there we go. But but again, trying to do it on a modern system is kind of hard. But there we're looking at, you guys should know what ballpark this is. Of course, it's, it's Fenway. There you go. All right, but anyhow, we're going to click Done, and let's get into the game itself. All right. And I'm going to let the game do the announcing. There's our lineups and let's play ball. We can set our you can re, you can set your batting order, you can change your pitchers if you want. And here we go. Hello there, everybody. Welcome to historic Fenway Park in beautiful Boston, where today we'll see St. Louis play Boston in this exhibition. The weather today is cool with a humidity reading of 50%. The wind is blowing in from right to left at 15 miles per hour. Looming above the players in left field, the famous Green Monster, a friend to so many Boston hitters over the years. I'm Mel Allen, and I'm here to bring you all the action Leading off the inning, Red Shane Beans, hitting 281. A slider in the dirt, smothered by the catcher. Ball one. Now, because I I probably want to go back into my options. Uh, and let me see what we can do here. Because I want to switch out of that. Uh, uh, there we go. Ground rules. All right. Um, so. I don't know why that one pitch mode is doing that, but we'll leave that on. And I'm going to let the um, computer do both teams, actually. Okay. Here we go. The payoff pitch. Grounded. Got him. That's one down. Up next, Enos Slaughter, batting 300. You can also switch these statistics in game to, like, your if you're doing a replay in this. A high chopper. And the throw to first. He beats it out. 
That's a base hit for Slaughter. Next batter, Stan Musial, hitting 365. A line drive to center field, and he makes the catch. Out number two, the throw to second base. Coming up next is the third baseman, batting 3-1. Here comes the pitch. It's a pitch out. The runner holds. It's a pitch out. The runner holds. The runner goes. A line drive to center field. And he makes the catch. That retires the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. Middle of the first inning. It's nothing to nothing. And now starting off the inning is Dom DiMaggio, batting 316. He comes to the plate. Grounded. Got him. The first out of the inning. Now that brings up Hal Wagner. Hitting 230. Grounded. And the throw to first. Got him. Out number two. not sure because again I'm showing serious lag on my side so um, then it'll come through Steve Tate is in here now he says I love you showing some awesome classic games we went back even to micro league baseball although I didn't play it I didn't hook up that drive to do that we did talk about it and kind of this evolution of play-by-play -play user interface um, so there's there are a few things um, about this game that you need to be aware of though okay um, one of them is the dreaded off-the-wall singles. To take care of that, you have to go into manage your tendencies. And remember, I showed you the little slidey thing. Um, let's go to a player roster here, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's go to Joe Morgan, right? Um, let me see, manager, uh, manager profile. All right, so here you can see the manager profile for... Cincinnati 1975. So if you remember when we were looking at Baseball Mogul, how we could go down to the player level. But remember, I said just remember the slide things. Well, here they are. So what you can do here is you're, you're setting manager tendencies, um, and how do you want to how do you want to manage? So to get rid of those terrible um, off the wall singles, see where it says push it. Go up there. And that is one of the things that you can do to get rid of those. Um, if you want to steal a little bit more, do that, whatever. This is self-explanatory. But th for anybody that has this game, crank this up for every manager. And you have to do this for every manager. This is just Cincinnati. So you can tailor each manager, just like you can do an out of the park or an action PC um, and out of the park and Diamond Mind. And um, there's another game I have to show yet, too. But we're getting close to the king of play-by-play, -play, and you guys already know what's coming. Um, the other thing about this game is there are no switch hitters. All switch hitters bat right-handed in this game. Still uses their stats and everything, um, but um, big omission. I don't know whether EA had pressured Stormfront or whatever to get this out the door because Tony La Russa Baseball 3 was so incredibly popular. But um, there are no, there's no switch hitters. Mickey Mantle's going to bat right. Doesn't matter whether you have a lefty pitcher or not. Doesn't matter. Righty pitcher, lefty pitcher. Doesn't matter. No switchies in this game. So nice play-by-play -play. Um, for the time for 1975 or 1995. These graphics are beautiful, and these ballparks are not 3D in the same way that we think about it. Um, you saw Fenway look beautiful there. Um, nice interface. You can kind of just go anywhere, do what you want. I can get down to my, I can set my batting order. 
the way that I want, even who's my going to be the key pinch hitter in case the AI is doing things. It's a lot of customizability. And now you can see it is batters versus right and then versus lefty, but there's no switch hitters. No switch hitters in this game. I would say that if you want to buy this, only buy this, well, buy it for the nostalgia, but also if you if you just want to compare and you like to play across eras and mix teams from all over the place, this is a nice trip down memory lane to do it. To see where we were at that time, which was pretty it was pretty good to where we are now with games like Action PC baseball and out of the park baseball. So nice stuff and not to piss off the strat PC guys, but um, this game from 1995 blows away the interface that you have now that you're paying how for. So um, there you go. Nice stuff. All right, we're going to jump out of this one. And we're going to go to another one. And then we'll get to that because we have to make we do have to make a stop on the way. Shots fired. Yep. I mean, I you know, it's a fun game. It's a fun game. Uh, but I'm watching, like I said, I was watching a couple guys last night. And by the way, once again, I'm going to let you guys know I had a no hitter last night in baseball for Windows. Scott McGregor, bless you. This is pure sim baseball, and again, I, I'm trying not to look at the screen monitoring because I have got some serious lag. It's like a minute or so behind, so I don't know what the hell you guys are seeing right now. Hardball was fun. Yep, so pure sim, you can still find it. Believe it or not, Sean Sullivan, the developer of this game. I'm bringing this up more to talk about interface, and I probably should um, play-by-play -play comparison, digital baseball. I'll change this later, the title. I want to talk about this because of its interface and its flexibility. This is actually a very flexible game. Um, again, you can tell it's an older game. It's not going to fill up your screen, unfortunately. So let's go to a new game because I don't think options, I don't think I can run this. Um, let's see, display options is going to go. Nope. The only, the only display options is to play fireworks animation when a home run is hit by the home team. That does have a speech engine. I don't even want to try it. This thing works, but yeah, you can auto assign player photos. I'm not even going to try it. Well, maybe I did. All right, so I, s I don't know what you guys. Okay, Robbie, you see Pure Sim. Thank you. I have no idea because on the little screen that YouTube where you can monitor things, I'm still seeing old time baseball. So I really appreciate you. Uh, I don't know what is going on. I've never seen this happen. All right, anyhow, let's start a new game of pure sim baseball. So I actually probably should have done this right after I did Out of the Park version 8. So we can do pure sim classic, pure sim classic with a quick start, major league career sandbox mode. Sandbox mode um, is super cool. So I'm going to do sandbox. And we're not going to do, I don't know what start year um, we're going to do. I guess we'll just do, um, I don't know, 1910 for giggles. And I don't use finances in this game. I don't use finances in any game I play. Click Next. All right. So some of the nice things about this, and again, you can see why Sean Sullivan created this as a direct competitor to Out of the Park. Um, you know, six, seven, eight, whatever. We talked about that interface of the older out of the park eight and, and, and how hard it was. There was so much information packed in there. And I think what Sean Sullivan did um, was really take that and make it a lot user friendly. For creating leagues, um, this this is more like modern out of the park baseball. So we can do if we want sixteen teams. We're just gonna do eight teams here because I don't want to keep us here all day. All right. This is kind of silly here because you have to collect and, and select region and all this kind of stuff, which is dumb. 
um, don't know why, um, and I can, you, you have to change their names. I'm just going to leave them at the Clippers. Really doesn't really matter. And again, I'm just setting all these to New, New York. But you can see it has all these. Right? Uh, maybe we'll put one in Reno, right? One in Dallas and Robbie's area. Let's go back to New York and Atlanta. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Boink. Wait. No. I d so you can create a new region if you want. But um, let's just take Seattle. All right. So now we've got all this done. So we're going to go next. And I guess we'll just make the New York Clippers me and next. All right. So now we get into a um, little deeper sorts of things. Do we want expansion for the league? Anything. So this, again, would be reminiscent of Out of the Park since, I think, Out of the Park 4 or Out of the Park 3 with its first real GUI. This will, this will take you through um, everything that you want to do. All right. Step by step. Let's click. What we're going to do is for player generation model, we're going to import historical player stats, and we're going to append the year, all right? Which again is something that um, we do in Baseball for Windows, all right? So we're creating this, and add import real players and teams, which is what we want to do. We can just make this strictly fictional if we want by just continuing to do the next stage. But we're going to do this and this will look familiar. However, this goes pretty deep. This is this goes if anybody has with baseball for windows and you're wondering about the encyclopedia import, this is the closest thing I could show you to the encyclopedia import. So, really nice and I I don't know whatever happened to Sean Sullivan, but there we go. What year? So let me pick a year and I'll just bring in a couple teams. 19, no, not, well, we've already, we have the 1927. All right, so we can, from here, who do I want to bring in? I don't know anything about the 1927 Chicago White Sox. Let's bring them in. So, and then what positions all, and I can import these to a free agent pool, or I might want to put these, remember, so I, I made all these cities. One of the reasons why you make these regions, this is basically the teams that you're making. But I'm going to go ahead and just import everybody to a free agent pool. We're not going to allow duplicate players. This is nice. I really like this if you're doing like a draft league. Uncheck this. So now we're only going to get whatever. So we're going to import. And I do want all the 1927 White Sox in there. And they're doing it. I can just I could have just imported one White Sox player into this game if I wanted, and I could just find his year. Okay, so I have I have 31 players in there right now. Nobody's on a team or anything. Um, I'm gonna load a game just so you guys can get a sense of the lack of play-by-play -play here. Um, let's see, let's see, can we find Lou Gehrig in all of this? Maybe. Let me see. I guess it helps to hit enter. There. There's Lou Gehrig. So we have Lou Gehrig, but we have all these different years. And this is kind of what the um, encyclopedia import of baseball for Windows can look like. But maybe I don't want to do just, I don't want to do Lou Gehrig. Maybe I just want to import an entire year now. So I already have the 1927 um, White Sox, but now I want to bring in all teams from 1941 not allowing duplicate players and I'm gonna take them again into the free agent pool and we'll sit here while this does this and I can answer some questions Beatles house is the International Museum of PC baseball since where do I get to the really old ones on another broadcast and you will see um, micro league baseball in action and some of these other games. Um, so we have, we're, we're ready to do a fantasy draft now. All right, so we can close this and we can continue to the next stage. Draft is optional. Would you like to run the draft? Yes, let's run a draft, damn it. So here we go. And um, 
you you know again just forget these things right and we'll talk about what's going on here in a second all right so draft pick details team pick summaries um, I can also look at a player's card you can see all this kind of cool stuff pictures are in there I forgot that I did do them all right interface issues let's get to it really quickly so you would think that by just closing this new window up here would close George Archie's window it will actually close out the whole game down here the lower right is closed you gotta click that to go back to where you're going right so let's go ahead and continue this draft and um, we can we can auto complete we can ask a scout so like in action PC baseball where you have computer suggest we can ask a scout he's saying sign Bob Mudcreef right so I can look for his scouting report there's this Bob Mudcreef we can look at um, you know if he had a season analysis or whatever and we just got a runtime error out of stack space and hopefully that doesn't crash the game but I think it's going to um, I don't want Bob Moncrief. Let's auto-complete this draft. You can choose your drafting strategy in here. How cool is that? All right. I'm just going to do neutral strategy, whatever works best. But you can pick what you want to do here. Um, and you couldn't do this at the same time, like in, in, in out of the park baseball. You couldn't do a league like this, which is really, really cool. All right. Um, and we're going to go um the rest of the draft and so it is supposedly drafting continue there we go and now it's drafting he is big clue how when did you hear that because i'd heard that sean sullivan was working on a new baseball sim around 2016 or 2017 which is why he made this available to the community so if he is working on a new baseball sim, I think it's going to be amazing. But there's been a lot of um, very loud silence. So here we go. We can click. We can start spring training. And we have so many New York teams. But um, there we go. Look, there's Joe DiMaggio. There he is. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? Yeah. Around Christmas. All right. Well, that's good to know, because there were there was all kinds of things going about. Like, did he die? Did he just you know go join a Buddhist monastery in Nepal? So we can see DiMaggio stats up to 1940, whatever. Um, da 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 da. You yes, you can change logos in this game too. Let's close this. Um, let's go to our front office, and if I wanted to. I can change logos. I can go in and find a directory. Um, so, just for giggles, let's. I don't know if it'll work, but let's try it. Fair warning: if you do pick up this game and it is freeware, and Sean said it was freeware, so don't feel badly about it. Um, he basically gave this game to the community, and this was once a commercial product. Um, so, where's my, where's my DK Sports man? I'm going blind here. That's somewhere in here. I just wanted to show. I just wanted to change. Let's just look for D, I guess. Oh, there it is. DK Sports Data. He's only staring me in the face. I don't know. I'm just going to bring in um, the Braves, I suppose. There we go. There's your logo. Simple, simple, simple. Oh, I gotta click on that. Yes, I do. Can I do this in a new tab, or is this gonna say something went wrong? Oh, nice, Sean Sullivan. God bless you, brother. Nice, nice, nice. All right, thank you for that. Thanks, big clue. Wow. Yeah, last. It's been a while. Anyhow, you can change logos. 
sign all these to the computers. Uh, what else is cool about this interface? There's your depth chart. How nice is that? So you can look at your depth chart and click on any of these players and see it. Just remember to hit this close. You want to switch? Let's switch to, I don't know, whoever was in the Dallas team. There you go. A lot of stuff you can do in this, but we want to actually now talk about um, interface wise did a video about this before I've never seen anything like this and I would love to see Action PC Baseball Dave Cook hint 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 bring this into your manager tendencies so while with players we know that we can get down to a granular level in some of these baseball sims this is the only one I've ever seen that does it situationally so and and again I did I did a video just about this game but so this is going to be general non-situational tendencies, right? All the way, when are you going to give your hook, your pitcher the hook, rest players when tired, whatever. So this is kind of a global thing for your manager. But look down here, right? You can go a platoon tendency from very low to very high. And this is just general. But what are you going to do here, right? You know, infield in the whole thing. Look at this. Pinch hit, innings one to third in a tied situation. Right? Are you going to pinch hit, steal, defensive sub, pitch around, sack bunt, pinch run, intentional walk, hit and run? What are you going to do when you're ahead by one run? Innings one to three. If you're ahead by two runs, ahead by three or more runs, right? If you're behind by one, behind by two, behind by three or more, is the situation tied from the fourth to the sixth inning? So by inning and by situation, all the way down not good enough for you, you don't want to go through all this stuff, click import manager and look at this. Look at all these managers, man. So let's change this whoever manager is into Johnny Evers. There. Now everything has changed and this will approximate how Johnny Evers would manage this team. Um... Right, well, not the detail. I've never, s does action have this for situational, Steve? I've, I've, I've not seen this for situational things in action. And if action has this, then I have misspoken. I've not seen it there. So does, so in other words, can I say this is what my, my manager will do if it's, I'm between inning, uh, innings one, two, or three, and I'm ahead by two runs? Okay, good. I've never seen it because this just blew my mind when I saw it. And I know you can import managers and stuff like that. Um, so good. All right. Nice to know. And um, I'm just going to set back to default. Yep. There we go. Whatever it is. All right. Let's play a game, though. Let's play a game real quick because we are talking about... Um, are talking about play-by-play -play, or the lack thereof. Let's bring in 1991 if it's still here. Alright. So from here we can view today's schedule and no I didn't bother putting in logos. Alright so we're going to manage the game uh, Montreal and Pittsburgh and once again beware of this and the home of the <laughs> So down here, you have the play-by-play -play in Pearson Baseball. You can set this to go top to bottom, bottom to top. So we're just going to go ahead and just click Enter. No out spaces empty. Bob Patterson pitches to Lando to Shields. The old, old pitch. It doesn't tell you what Shields does. You have to call it fly ball. It just says Delano to Shields flies out to right. So one thing that it wasn't keeping pace with out of the park was a detailed play-by-play. -play. You're not going to have that in this game. Perhaps Sean's thinking was, well, I've got a good animated ball flight. I don't need that. And as you saw in Out of the Park 8, we had no animation. So, pretty nice. We'll let it, we'll let it do, I don't know. 
And again, everything here is clickable. Do I want to look at Dave Martinez, just quick stats, or do I want to bring up Dave Martinez and look at his card? I can close it. Play. Oh. That's pretty much it. We'll go ahead. Well, I think we're just going to back out of this game completely. Although I, th I think we're going to get, I think we're going to get a runtime error. We're going to try this. Yep. There we go. Oh well, it happens. So we're stuck in a crash here, so uh, it's task manager time, baseball fans. You gotta play out games in this. Um, you used to be able to auto play, but you really can't. So we're gonna kill this. Boom. And it's suspended. And it's gone. Alright, now we get to the end of it. And I'm going to bring up a very boring looking screen. I hope you got, um, Steve Tate says, yes, Perry, at checkout, use the code upgrade, and I believe you get five bucks off. Yeah, you do. And usually when you get it right at release, it's a little bit more. All right. So now here, finally, we are talking about interface and play by play. And for my money, for play by play, this is an awesome game because this is more than just a mere narrator that we use in Microsoft, right? And whatever, and that, and and credit to Steve Tate for trying to put together um, something really, really cool with inflection and being able to interact with the game and stuff like this. Um, this was released around 1994, I believe, so a year earlier. Um, around this, it was around the same time as Old Time Baseball. This is APA Baseball for Windows. And this is the um, main screen. This is the League Manager Power Tool. This is where all games are played from. Schedule already set up. I'm not going to get into any of the nuts and bolts in this. Um, so let's talk about first the cons versus Strat PC, since APA and Strat are direct, right? All, all the rivalry that we have. This game is modular. Each game talks to the other module. So while this is open, I can't use Advanced Draft. I can't use Stat Manager. Those are different modules. However, anything that I do in any module is reflected in other modules. Okay. Um, again, you have, with as with all these games, lots of menu choices. This is where you're going to set rules for your league, everything like this. And we'll get into a game in a minute, but we're going to exit this for a second because I, I'm, again, talking about interface. I have to go to a different program to a very, ve this is very powerful. This is advanced draft. This is how you create whatever you want to create. And if you have all the seasons and if you've done it either by buying them or using the Fan Park Encyclopedia import, which we hopefully, if Arnold Hunter's around, we're going to give him an elegant solution to that. I'm just going to open this here. This is a draft league that we just saw. I can open it, and there it is. Open it. There's all the players. Do I want to look at the St. Louis Cardinals? Why not? There they are up here, and down here are is every player in this draft league. Every single player in this draft league. Anybody highlighted in red? That you will see, like here's Johnny Edwards. He's on these 1968 Cardinals, so I you know, can go through whatever. Just like in just about every other game that allows you to do what the hell you want, like action PC baseball, for instance, um, I can release all these players into a draft pool. I can release every single player on here into a draft pool. 
um, but this is how you create whatever you want this is how you can bring in seasons and I'll show you guys here if you want to do anything with seasons um, this is everything that I've pretty much done with this um, I did 1895 then I skipped ahead to 1900 and then I also did some things like the 1900s the best of there they are let's bring them in um, I haven't named them yet or anything like that but let's look at uh, the Chicago Cubs these are the Chicago Cubs best of the 1910s and you guys should know where this came from these are from Action PC Baseball and I recreated them in Baseball for Windows and there they are and once again down here everybody in this best of league so if I wanted to do a draft league of players just from 1910 to 1920 I could release all of these players 465 and do a draft league it's it's that cool I want to look at a player well I go to Pete Alexander not only can I look at him in the old way in the game for former owners of Baseball for Windows, I think you'll like this in 5.75, where um, which this game is is very much available. Looking at these ratings, but what if you play app of cards and dice? Well, if I right click on Pete Alexander, I can do view card and boom, there's his card. And, um, Baseball for Windows is based on the master rules. There's Alexander's card and. Uh, pretty tough pitcher to say the least and you can see all these cards this is nothing new to app I know that strat you can do this but with strat with strat so one comparison you have to buy the card images you have to that's extra these come with appa there are the cards they're right there I didn't have to pay anything else I can look at more one at a time what about Johnny Evers let's look at Johnny Evers card too at the same time there's Johnny Evers I can populate this whole screen with a ton of cards and they don't cost extra at all all of these things come with the game obviously you have to have the, the season but there you go full count baseball yep so Arnold um, if you can hang out for a little bit longer I promise this is gonna end soon <laughs> Um, I'm going to tell you about how you can have lots of fun and um, as far as not worrying about seasons and stuff like that from a site called Digital Skybox and friends here in the community. So I think this is really, really um, a nice gesture on Apple's part. There are the cards. You can't roll the dice in this game, but you can certainly imagine what uses you can have here. All right. What else can you do? Again, I said modular. We go to Stat Master. Stat Master, if I open this, and you can see here, remember how I said how each module, quote unquote, talks to the other module? Well, I just had the best of the 1910s up in a different module, but look what data disk is ready if I just want to load it in the 1910s. Really, really, really nice. I don't have to futz around with not only strats big bunch of menus going across the top and all the crazy things going on the way down and the special naming conventions that you have to use in strat to create your own sort of fantasy leagues or something like that I don't have to mess with any of that in APA which is really really cool but I haven't done anything in that but I have played a couple games um, I believe in this um, in this this draft season uh, yeah, just only one or two games actually this is one I had the no hitter in last night actually standard reports um, maybe I just want to do pitching display and there we go so I can we can see there's Scott McGregor he's 1-0 and oh, um, and over in the National League or whatever we have Bob Gibson right so this tracks stats and I can go as deep or shallow as I want with this. So again, just showing you guys different modules in this game, right? The migration tool. This is something I don't that 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 I know Strat doesn't do. So I told you guys when I was living at home, and I bought um, a new version or I bought a new laptop. I wanted to migrate Strat PC over to my new laptop. 
So I just thought, hey, I'm going to be a nice guy, call Strat, say, how do I do this because of their, and it's old copy protection. I do not condone piracy, but I would tell you this, their copy protection is circa 1992. And if you know a little bit of math, you can, you can break their copy protection. That's all I'm saying. But don't do it because that's their intellectual property, but you can. But what does APA do as a nod to longtime players and also to be able to move from one PC to another is this beautiful migration tool. It will scan your existing directory, right? So maybe you, you've backed up everything to a zip drive. When you do this, it's going to list all this and it's going to just install it everything onto your PC. If you've created seasons and earlier versions of baseball for Windows using an encyclopedia import, maybe you have a BCK file from our online league or a league that you've done with friends, boom, bring it right over. You cannot do it like this in Strat. So plot it to APA for this one as well. They didn't have to do this. Um, saved me a lot of money, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. All right, now let's get back to the game itself. So Ernie Harwell is the um, announcer in this game. He said every surname that would have been, I guess, wow, this was before Total Baseball, so I guess every surname, I guess, that would have been in the Macmillan Baseball Encyclopedia. He also did a lot of the first names. He did numbers to cover all batting averages, wins, losses, ERA, all that kind of stuff. This is also a very early AI, the crowd in it. Um, there's a little bit of AI there. It does respond intelligently. It's not AI as it is now, but Ernie is. And the other thing about this that takes him beyond a mere narrator is he will remember as you go through a season and the deeper you go in, he's going to remember stats for every player. Obviously, there's some lookup, but he's also going to be able to, maybe later on he'll say so-and-so is a dangerous hitter. Well that's going to be triggered in the game based on those stats and that's something that until with Microsoft working with its neural voices I suppose that'll be something that's down the line this is 1994 1995 technology I'm gonna start a game it's gonna sound a bit robotic to your ears at, if, at first if you haven't heard it bear in mind where it comes from a very very good baseball engine it's as good a strat as Steve pointed out yesterday um, when we were talking about this, and a lot of people think Strat is the most um, accurate baseball sim out there. Well, how, how the hell do you prove that? But Steve made a wonderful point yesterday that these companies wouldn't be around if they were putting out junk so and, and, and putting out things that were so wildly inaccurate. So it's going to be a little bit jarring, but compared to all the play-by-play -play that we've seen, um, even that we heard in the case of um, old-time baseball, Hopefully this will be a little bit of a treat for you. All right, let me make sure that this is piping through to you guys. It should, and it is. All right, so we're gonna come up here, play a manual game. All right, so what do we got here? Um, Royals at Red Sox. Let's just do Royals at Red Sox, and this is probably gonna turn into a complete game. So. In fact, if you guys can hear me over this, are there any questions about the games that we've gone through? Um, Arnold, I'm going to ask Robbie to do a favor for you. Robbie, if you could maybe... Arnold, are you in our Discord? That's the first thing. Because I think it'd be good for you and Robbie to have a private conversation about baseball for Windows so that you can get over your disappointment. Robbie, would you be willing to... If, if Arnold has some time, get him in the Discord or figure out a time when you and he can talk. We'd like you to join, Arnold. It's good stuff. Lots of baseball talk and baseball gaming talk. So Robbie's going to put, please, the link to our Discord. Please join. And then Robbie will send you some messages in the Discord about how you can greatly enhance your Baseball for Windows experience. Um, and you won't be disappointed. All right. Okay, good. Another nice thing about um, that I think makes this better than Strat PC, and again, this has to be a comparison, is this is not 
a direct conversion of the APA Master Cards and Dice game into a digital format. This actually uses artificial intelligence. So down here in this little drop down list, and there are thousands of them, these are all AI managers, all of them. And they will manage very differently. Some of these are for specific eras. So um, like Rabbit Shindell, if this was a dead ball game, I'd want him to be managing. Um, or I might want to pick John McGraw, Connie Mack. There's tons of these managers available. So I'm going to let the computer manage both teams. Lineups are already set, as you can see. And um, I'm going to go ahead and mute and let this play for a couple innings. Perry, please join our Discord. Please cl click on the link and join and introduce yourself. It'd be great to have you in the community. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, they let me in, so. All right, welcome to the family, Perry. Feel free to post things baseball related, gaming related. Um, there's a bunch of different channels. Uh, whatever you want to do, just um, you know, meet the community. It's a bunch of great people here. So welcome in. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ernie Harwell. And welcome to Boston Red Sox Baseball. Here on WAPBA, you always have a front row seat. We're coming to you from out here at the park where the Red Sox will host the visiting Kansas City Royals. It's opening day. The season is about to get underway for these two teams. A beginning as all else should begin. Bright with optimism and good spirit. Game number one of three here in Boston. The Red Sox take the field here in the first. Get your scorecard. Manager Anderson sends out his squad this way. Buckner at first base. Barrett at second. Canonis the shortstop. Boggs at third. The outfield consists of Armas in left field. Rice in center field. And Evans over and right. Gedman is behind the plate and on the mound for the Red Sox. The right-handed Clemens. He'll throw it by just about any batter. He will be facing Royal starter. Right-hander Leonard. We'll tell you about him in the bottom half. So settle in. We're ready to start this game. To get it going, Wilson. Wilson hit the plate to hit. Gedman crouched down now. Clements with the pitch. Hit in the air to center. Rice roams over. He's there. Reaches back and makes the catch for out number one. Next to bat for Kansas City is Washington. The switch hitting UL will bat left here. You can't afford to take him too lightly. Washington in the box. Pitcher Clements eyeing Washington. Now he's ready. Clements deals. Right by him. Strike three. Two gone. Brett steps up to face Clemens, batting third. Two down, nobody on for Kansas City. George with dynamite bat control. Batter waits. All right, guys, I'm going to pop in here. I'm not going to. I'm not going to let this go all the way. Obviously, um, it'd be fun. I usually do in the afternoon. Um, but call your attention to a couple things. It's really cool about this play-by-play. -play. So yeah, when, when he's saying names or club names, you're gonna hear that little hitch. But I haven't seen a technology that's around yet that can do what this can do, and we've hardly even started this game. But if we go up here to options, and announcer and sounds, I can choose between just merely play-by-play, -play, a light commentary, a full broadcast, which is what Ernie's doing. I can set it to be unaffiliated for the visiting team or for the home team, 
he'll adjust his announcing accordingly, which is really cool. And then I can change all this stadium noise, announcer noise, crowd noise, whatever. But this is so there's like three different things going on in here that you can choose between, which is really, really nice. So I thought that was also um, worth mentioning. Um, he will do things um, in the game. He will do things in the game like if it's a blowout, he'll sit there and maybe, maybe in, in a game he might get a letter from a secret admirer or somebody that wants to send him a recipe for an apple pie or whatever. Um, rain delays can be funny. Ejections are hilarious. I've been playing this game forever, and I, I still I still hear this Ernie voice saying things that I've never heard it say before. Um, it's an incredible game, and I will make a bold statement that this game, out of all the ones that we've shown, even including Out of the Park 8's brilliant text play-by-play -play and, and Diamond Mine Baseball's play-by-play, -play, even Action PC, we, we can customize it. I haven't shown you Digital Diamond Baseball. You can customize it. This is the king of play-by-play -play right here. So even if you read it and you turn off the Ernie voice, the play-by-play -play in this game is phenomenal. That is my opinion. When you add in the Ernie voice, though, you're at a whole nother level. And again, um, I've, I've looked in the directory of this game to try to, as a musician, I'm like, how can I manipulate the samples? You can't. It's, it's proprietary technology, and it's absolutely brilliant. But this is the king of play-by-play. -play. Um, I can turn this on, work on sleight of hand magic. That's one of the things I do. I can read, lie down, you know, just kind of like chill and listen to some baseball. Or I can set this up and manage if I want to so much that you can do with uh, baseball for windows and you can also do a lot of not quite as deep as action pc but the gimmick about this game is not just the voice there's a good engine under this game as well so This was a big stream, three hours and 13 minutes. I hope that uh, somebody gets got some things out of this today. Yeah, um, Steve and I were talking that we wish. Yeah, I hope Arnold will too, because I, what I want to talk about with App, I'd rather you know that be done in our Discord for obvious reasons. So hopefully he will. Um, yeah, Perry. So uh, Steve Tate and I were talking about if Action PC could just add in, do something like this, it would be perfect. Because the play-by-play -play on that chalkboard back in Action PC is so beautifully synced up, beautifully synced up, that... Um, but Steve... Um, never one to be deterred is um, experimenting with narrator voices um, using Microsoft narrators um, specifically the ones that are available in Windows 11 those neural voices and while it's they're not doing exactly what Ernie does they're at least listenable which is a great first step and um, yeah so good stuff All right. I don't know if uh, there's anything else. Again, I, I didn't bother installing Digital Diamond Baseball. I think enough of you in the community have seen it to know that it has a good play-by-play. -play. Um, it has some serious interface issues, however. Um, trying to set up your own league sucks. There's one more I could show you, but it would be anticlimax. I showed it last night. Is Don Brav Baseball. Suffice to say, it really doesn't have a play-by-play -play to speak of. Now, all of that being said, at the end of the day, is play-by-play -play important? You know, is it, you know, would I choose a game because it has a brilliant play-by-play? -play? No, I won't. Um, as a matter of fact, some of the games I play don't really don't have that brilliant play-by-play. -play. 
action at Rava Park Baseball 23 doesn't have it. Um, you know, whatever. Diamond Mind we saw has great. Uh, Pearson Baseball really has none. And neither does Baseball Mogul. But they're still fun. If we're rolling cards and dice, my friends, if we're playing digital baseball, what are we really doing? We're playing it out in our imaginations. As I'm sitting here listening to Ernie Harwell call this game, between these two teams, I feel like I'm listening to the radio. As maybe I'm looking at that static ballpark image, and the only thing that moves are the player markers from base to base, right? That's the only thing that moves in this game. That's it. And then some scoreboard animations. Nothing else moves in this game. But yet, is that any different, right? When you're, when you're chucking those dice, man, and you've got George Brett up there, you know you're seeing George Brett at bat. Um, and I think at the end of the day, how much do you enjoy what you're playing? And that's what it comes down to it. I, I have issues with certain games, like, you know, because of their interfaces that I don't like. Does that mean, and you hear me dumping on Strat PC, do I think Strat PC is a bad game? Absolutely not. Do I think Strat Cards and Dice is bad? No, it's superb. Um, and it is what you love. But I want to talk about play-by-play -play because... To be honest with you, while I won't choose a game just based on its play-by-play, -play, I do like the immersion factor. Where do you get that in action PC, if not in the play-by-play, -play, with its customizability? I can very easily say, what if, what if, what if? So Steve Tate's five-year franchise files, which we have a couple new people in here, and I should show them. Speaking of which, we have Henri in here. He says, it's the current app of Baseball for Windows. Yes, it is. Does it work with Windows 11? Yes, it does. And does it come with Ernie Harwell? Yes, it does. So, bienvenue, Henri. Um, it does. Yes to all, as Robbie Wartberg says. Robbie is the crusader. He is the pope of Baseball for Windows. Yes, this is the newest version. And it runs beautifully right off the rip. Ken Castro says in the Cars and Dice Realm, Phillies 1965 replays. Phillies drop a sloppy game to the Cards 6 2. Dr. Strangelove is responsible for both runs via solo jobs, and Belinsky takes the defeat. Oh, ouch. So there it is, guys. I just wanted to show off some baseball games, some interface things, and stuff like that. Play by play. At the end of the day, it is play what you love. There, there are folks out there that absolutely swear by PC Replay Baseball. I've tried it twice. I can't even figure out how to start a damn game in that, and I'm not alone. My buddy Steve Tate said the same thing. Can't, cannot figure it out. I'm sure it's a great game. I also know it doesn't have a very good play-by-play -play at all. But that's not why. It's just... It's, for me, it just doesn't click. For, for a lot of people, this doesn't click. For others, Diamond Mine doesn't click. Still, for others, like Ken Castro, Out of the Park Baseball 2023, or Out of the Park Baseball 2023, right? The state-of-the-art baseball sim didn't click with him. It is what you love at the end of the day, but I thought I would just show a few of the digital alternatives. Um, sometime I will hook up this um, game that's two terabytes, and I'll show you guys micro league baseball for a little trip nostalgia we'll do a little bit of earl weaver baseball one and two um we'll do tv sports baseball bo jackson baseball um that'll be down the line but i do want to bring in a lot of those but that'll just be for fun thank you perry perry rubino saying you're awesome welcome perry into the channel we hope to see you again a lot of times it is just broadcast most of the time we have a game going we end up talking in here and that's what's fun. This is really more about community. And Perry, I don't know how new you are to our YouTube sports gaming community. And I try to give out favors and try to do good things. Um, and I will mention other channels while on mine, even though those guys aren't here. Um, and whatever. So if you want to listen to good broadcasters, I'm going to give you names of a few people. Al Red Sox fan who does every sport you can imagine. Uh, Christopher Slovic um, sounds like the real deal. Um, Dave Little is a brilliant broadcaster. If you're into cars and dice, um, 
RJL Network. And right now he's doing a replay of the 1990 or 1988 season. Um, Sports Time Machine does a lot with Strat PC. Um, ID Jester um, does a lot of, like, he does board gaming, war gaming, but he's also a big baseball fan. Um, but the, the guys that I especially mentioned, our Red Sox fan, Chris Slovic, Dave Little, RJO Network, you're going to get more of a broadcast experience from them. For me, I'll call a game. I don't sound like a sports, a baseball broadcaster. I'm an actor. I'm trained in accents. I could do the whole damn thing in an, in, in, in an Italian accent if you wanted. I could even do it in Italian if you wanted. And sound like a broadcaster. I don't want to. All of these people in here, and so the new folks here as well, Perry, Henri, um, you know, um, and also we had way, way, way back. Um, anyhow, you're all welcome in. This is really a place for us to, Richard Butler, um, this is really a place for us to hang out, talk baseball. Thank you, Aaron, for that. He says it's a, uh, he said great stuff as always. Oh, good luck. So, so if you're trying with RetroArch, try, try different emulators, Aaron. Sometimes that's just the thing. And Arnold says he truly loves this community. Arnold, please join our Discord. Robbie has some great baseball for Windows information for you that I think you will love. Just click that link up there, buddy. Please. This community is amazing. Perry, looking forward to it. Um, the Discord was originally set up by our good friend John DFW for our Ned McGreevy Nuff Said League that we do at nights. It's a league devoted to the 19th century and dead ball era. Draft league, players from 1880 to 1919. So, um, and then we're moving on to some um, other amazing projects. And it couldn't have been done without everybody that's here and you are now, you're part of the family. You keep coming um, in here, you also get a wrench. You become a moderator. And I see you coming into a few streams in that. So hopefully you will. It's my way to say thank you. Tape Saturator. Thanks, Beatles. Excellent stream showing all the games. You are most welcome, and I hope you'll come back another time. I guess that's about it. I mean, we can, anybody who wants to feel like hanging out and chatting for a little bit longer, um, we can do that. We'll get, get some chatter going and what have you. Um, something I, coming up on the channel, while well, I still have a few viewers here at least, is we're going to have something coming up called Why We Love Baseball. And I'd like people, I'm going to do it in a way that um, if people want to actually come on mic and also talk, um, we can have an actual voice discussion along with what's going on in the chat. And I know for some people they would say, well, geez, you're trying to do it, Al Red Sox fan. No, I'm not doing that. Al, what Al does is his thing, and it's awesome, his chat with Al. What I like to do just occasionally is just pick a topic and just have some folks on to talk about it. And, and that's it. Nothing fancy. You don't need your webcam anything like that. I don't use my webcam. Um, I, you know, as a performer, I, I sometimes would like to maintain anonymity and stuff like that. So I hope that you guys will look out for that. And if you like the channel, I hope you'll subscribe. I rarely ask that, but if you do, I would appreciate it. And if you don't, it's all good, too. It's all good, too. You're going to find much better channels out there. I, I, I make no, I have no delusions about um, my channel here. I'm not here to be those guys. Those guys are awesome. They are awesome. This channel is very niche, and this is about baseball. I'm starting another channel for the other things that I do, but this is about baseball, the love of the game, the love of baseball gaming, to sit here like like all of us did yesterday for three hours looking at rosters on Action PC Baseball. That's how geek we get here. That's how geek we get here, and Steve's back in here. Um, so, in fact, while he's in here, before you guys leave, I know you're going to be like, here he goes again. Uh, do I want to save my changes? I do not. I'm going to bring this up one more time for anybody that might be still on the fence about Action PC Baseball 2023, because I have to, and because Steve didn't pay me to do this. Um... I am going to keep pushing these and pushing these and pushing these. We'll do American League for a change. 
So what you're going to see loading up here is something that I guarantee you, gentlemen, is nowhere to be found in any digital baseball game, and this would be impossible for obvious reasons to do in um, Cards and Dice. So what Steve did, and um, hey, we have, uh, that would be mm, Pickled119. Awesome. I love the name, by the way. Pickled1, Pickled1, I love it, man. He says, thank you so much for all you and Steve do. Action PC is an awesome game. He's learned a lot about the game listening to both of you guys. Oh, man, y you are so welcome. And, and the lion's share of the thanks really goes to Steve who, again, I will tell you guys, please go to his virtual unboxing video and everything else on his channel. Please subscribe to Steve Tate. Robbie, if you're there, could you do a little bit more heavy lifting for me, please? Robbie's my heavy, he's my heavy lifting mod. we got to keep him busy. Pib, he says, just dropping in now, still recovering from last night's walk-off no-hitter. Baby, let me tell you, it took me forever. Robbie, would you be so kind to drop a link to Steve's main channel? for the folks here so that they can go subscribe. I'd appreciate it, buddy. So what you're looking at here is 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 astounding. So you buy a baseball game, you buy action PC baseball, um, and, and or you buy out of the park, whatever. What's one of the things you're usually going to see is an all-time great franchise, all-time great teams files, right? So the greatest Pirates, greatest Cubs, greatest Tigers, greatest Yankees, Red Sox, etc. What Steve has done here is nothing short of just bloody amazing and I'll tell you why and if you've heard me say it before then I don't know um, maybe ignore me or something because you already know what I'm gonna say every single thing that you see in here and this is just the American League so there's 90 plus teams here and another file with 90 plus National League teams so this is not a great franchise league as you would think of it but rather what Steve did was five year runs of teams largely now he's starting to put in some outliers um, but that were largely had 500 runs or five like 500 like you know win loss records or above um, and so we're going to take a look at we're going to take a look at uh, let's take a look at the 1936 to 1940 Yankees for instance and here's where the craziness begins um, and I hope he's in here yes he is Whew. okay every stat that you see right here for this this um, and, and he's just taking the middle year 1938 so this isn't actually 1938 Yankees but it's the Yankees from 1936 to 1940 five-year stretch right every stat that you see here every single stat every rating Everything in this, God, thousands. Steve estimates maybe 7,000 players between these two files. Steve has hand coded everything. This is not data that come from um, DK Sports. He uses huge, all kinds of spreadsheets. Uh, he uses um, StatHead, which is a paid. Um, right, he uses baseball reference, everything, and every single player. All right, so let's bring up one, one of my favorites, Lou Gehrig. So if you guys get even a deeper appreciation of this work. Okay, I don't have a replay going with this right now because this is not set up as a league you should play, but rather, Steve says, a drafting league. Do whatever. So all this stuff that you're seeing in here, this is Steve's work. This is, this is his work. And... I can tell you that I'm just right now not only staring at rosters, but I'm playing just exhibitions right now with these files, and they are they are terrifyingly accurate. They're, these are these are brilliant, 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 and they're free. They are free. If you tried to create recreate this in out of the park baseball you'd be lucky to maybe get 10 teams done. And we're talking over 180 teams. That really, in a lot of ways, is a history of baseball. And um, right now, Steve is into a deeper project that we'll talk about in a second. You can play.
play these as exhibitions. As Steve suggests, you want to create a league, create a blank league, start bringing over teams like we did way, way back when I was showing, I believe when I was showing Perry what could be done with this game. Um, we, you know, if you're going to do it, though, give Dave Cook some love, pick up the game, and maybe pick up another one of his products. Baseball History Collection, I think, is a great one. If you don't have the dosh for that, at least pick up baseball's top 160 teams. Anyhow, you've got something here that is literally infinite. It is infinite. I, I mean, I, I don't even know. If you would have a, a mathematician to try to start doing commutation or uh, combinations, permutations of what is in this crazy file, it's just it's just off the charts. And um, we're going to be giving Steve a big thank you in a lot of ways for this, more than just verbally. Um, so I wanted to point this out, how how insane this is, and this guy is doing it as a labor of love and giving unselfishly to the community um, and if there's anybody anybody in our sports gaming community that really in my mind sorry about the, the, the bro love fest here guys but this is just incredible to me that really deserves um, you know to, if you were to say who, who's an example a, a, a paragon of the community I'm certainly one of those people Steve Tate he's created something for us God knows how many hundreds and hundreds of hours, if, thou if not thousands of hours, probably closer to the mark, into this, and we can just fire it up and play it. And Steve has not asked a penny for this. Can you imagine this? Um, I I did get it, Aaron. I don't. I'm not sure if I accepted it. I will. I I'm just. I'm scatterbrained, dude. But I definitely will friend you. Not a problem. Big Clue, of course, doing, yeah, literally years of work on it. Um, sent email with the updated Negro League Baseball file. Yeah, do you guys want to look at this? Do you guys have time? Anybody have time? Do you want to look at the uh, Negro League Baseball file, the, the updated one that Steve's doing? Because if you think this project's nuts, where do you see what this one, the next one's going to be? So, uh, yeah, you know what? Arnold says, yes, big clue, you bet. Robbie has time. I mean, why not? All right, cool. Let me let me check my electronic mail. Chat amongst yourselves. And um, I'll get this installed, and I'll show you guys. And if you haven't seen this yet, for those of you who are new to the channel, especially Perry, if you're still here, hang in. This is worth it. It really is worth it. Oops, <laughs> wrong one. There we go. So you have to watch these because, uh, you know, Interpol and all that. All right, so. And boom, 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 boom. The nice thing about having so many mods is I don't have to look at the chat because I know you guys are, everybody's going to behave. Um, let me see. It's the updated files and photos. Good lord. All right. Let's let's do this. Let us do this. So download. And um, I guess I'll just put them on the old desktop. And download. Photos too. Nice. So, Steve, what I'm going to do is I haven't created a subdirectory yet. So, um, I'm going to show those photos just sort of in situ, as it were. If in, Actually, no, I'm going to, I'll just dump them in there for now, and then they still should show up. All right, let me see here. Let's um, show in folder. And there you guys can like see in somebody's... Um, Underwear on the uh, Google League cards. I think these are the same ones. Yep. All right. So, oh no, wait. Negro League cards. So that's the league file. Yep. Okay. Got it. I think. Wait. 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 
I'm so confused. Oh no, I didn't. Where'd it go? Where's the Negro League rates? God, I'm such an idiot today. All right, photos. And um, let me drag these to the desktop. Actually, all right, those will go down here. And let's get this on the Negro League grades, and we're going to leave this here and save to the desktop. Almost there, guys. Um, this was a destination. I'm just going to cancel this. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. All right. Show in folder. Why are you not? What am I missing here? Hang on. It's not showing in the bloody folder. Let's do it this way. There's what I want. All right. So cut. It's a very existential moment, isn't it? And let's put this in seasons and paste. All right, do that, and then I want to get these photos up so you guys can. Um, well, let's actually do it this way. Is this it? This is one thirteen. All right, and da 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 da. da, da. Let me go like photos. No idea where it's going to put them either. Ah, uh, yeah, the, the joys. There we go. Let's move them over here. Oh, my God. Where do you guys see these things? All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, let's do this. Control A. Probably going to get back and nobody's going to be here. Control C, C, DK Sports Data, and let's just put them into player photos and paste. There we go. Then we don't have to just show them outside their little universe, but we're actually in it. All right, all right, all right. So let's get back here, leave my email open. Holy hell, people are still here. Okay, nice. Subdirectory may be already created due to the rule setting uh, to do just that. All right, well, um, hmm. I just dumped them in the player photo, so I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I can compare for both files. <coughs> so I want to... No, I don't want to keep them. I want to keep both because they're good. There we go. All right. So backstory first before we show you the cool before we show you the goods, right? It's like looking in certain types of magazines and you have to go through the ads before you get to the good uh, center parts, right? Unless you're Ken Castro and you have a platinum membership. All right. So um MV and I had talked about wanting to do a Negro Leagues project at the end of the Dead Ball project in that McGreevy League. And so the first thing is like, okay, well, geez, what are we going to do this in? Are we going to do this, you know, because Diamond Mind has some home brews for uh, Negro Leagues. They have an official Negro League disc. I don't play Strat PC, and although they, they do have a lot of Negro Leagues, um, Out of the Park has all of them. Um, but then we got to Action PC, and it had eight. And we thought, are eight seasons going to be enough to actually create a meaningful draft pool for a draft league for subscribers to the channel? Much the same ways that we did with the Ned McGreevy League 
um, that I mentioned earlier. So we're kind of kicking it around, and I knew that I had the Negro League seasons, and Steve Tate hanging out, and we were having, it was an after-game chat, and Steve's kind of said, well, maybe this, and do they have that? All right, then, Big Clue comes in, Big Clue comes in, and he says, guess what I have? And, and this is then where the, the craziness really started and where um, Big Clue with his, his just right his resources, baseball historian as just I mean everybody in this channel are amazing. Sent Steve what are called these major league equivalencies. Huge amounts of tables and if we were, go to Steve's channel he'll show you some of this stuff. Um, basically what Steve is doing right now and it's going to take a while, is creating a Negro League file, but check this out. One of the problems with the Negro Leagues, as you guys know, is they didn't play official 154 game uh, schedules. They didn't. Another problem, of course, was because of segregation in the country. Um, African Americans essentially had their own newspapers. So the New York Daily News and the Chicago Tribune and um, LA Times, whatever, they weren't covering the Negro Leagues the same way they were covering Major League Baseball, right? It's a sad fact, but it is nonetheless, it's true. So basically, what's being done using these crazy formulas and a whole process that um, that Steve is doing is he is doing something that's, I think, super important, not only for baseball gaming, but for baseball research. He is doing these players one at a time, and they are being carded for a 154 game schedule and he is doing a ton of Negro League players. The problem with what comes with Action PC, and I will get you the file here in a minute, the problem with Action PC Baseball is you have um, th I think it's three seasons from the 1920s and five from the 1930s. There's no uh, Negro League Baseball from the 19 teens, so Pop Lloyd right, one of the greats, what wouldn't be in there, and players from the 40s and even in the 30s, the rest of the 20s, woefully incomplete. Um, I don't know if Dave Cook is still going to be going, but you you will look at a team like the 1937 Kansas City Monarchs, and they their record was like 42 and 27. The point being is, if you put these guys in to a major league league file, usage wise, they're not they're they're just going to get killed. They're not even going to playing time. So Steve has created, is creating not only a meaningful file for Negro League players, and he's creating an A-team league, I asked him if he would do that, an A-team league that we're going to draft players onto, but it will now be possible when this is done, and this is huge, where we can finally take these Negro League players and put them in to any major league draft league that we want to any one you want to and you're going to have Josh Gibson facing Rube Waddell or Sandy Koufax or Randy Johnson and I think for for not only for baseball gaming but for doing what if scenarios and historical study how would Josh Gibson using these sophisticated mathematical formulas plus some art on Steve's side and everything else we can get a better idea about these great, great players who never had a chance to play in the major leagues. They get to play again. And they get to play now. And there's a wonderful article from MajorLeagueBaseball.com that was just talking about these major league equivalencies. And one of the big ones, Christy Mathewson is no longer one of the top ten pitchers in baseball. Bullet Rogan knocks him off of there. So... Here we go. Let's do this, man. Let's 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 install this season so you guys can see it. And again, pro tip, always do display all zip files. <laughs> and let me see. I'm trying to remember what Steve called it now that I've done that homily. Um, okay, Negro League Greats, 113. There it is. Let's install it.
and it's installed. Let's let it come up. All right. So here we go. Um, I guess team one. And we do have some pictures. So here we go. Let's bring up Josh Gibson, and I, I guess the photo assignments. Don't know why I'm not seeing them. Weird. I guess I have to see them on the field, or maybe it's not finding them. Anyhow, this is Josh Gibson, man. Here's Oscar Charleston. Everything that you see here, all this stuff. This is not coming from any existing source because they didn't exist. 149 games for Oscar Charleston. He probably played 149 games in a season, but a lot of time uh, Negro League players played against semi-pro teams, um, independent minor league type teams, what have you. Okay, What are some of the things that he's done? Well, new in Action PC Baseball 2023 is the sort of really neat info tab. Okay, And so before you'd look there and if the player was an MVP for a certain number of years or if he was in the Hall of Fame or whatever you get this little blurb up here so what does Steve do here well he's writing just a couple sentence blurbs is a hundred character limit so for Oscar Charleston so it's educational which me being an educator I love this considered to be the greatest Negro Leagues player a reliable slugger that won many batting titles and I mean look at Charleston's numbers and you can see that but the sharp-eyed among you are gonna notice wait a minute why is he also rated as a pitcher hmm did Steve Tate mess up no he didn't <laughs> so also in the Negro Leagues um, pitchers were also position players very, very infrequently, but you would have you would have rare instances like Satchel Paige, who would be strictly a pitcher. Um, and so he's also rated as a pitcher. These guys are going to be dangerous when they get into because it's Steve's not making any of this stuff up. And we can see here as a starting pitcher. So if you guys know anything at all about how these these little systems work and they're based off of stats, these are baked into the game. These two pluses as a starter means Oscar Charleston is a legit starter. Um, also, these two pluses are relief. So these show you that they get, there is a statistical advantage that these players, that these pitchers are going to have, and Steve know, would know more in detail. But that's what that signifies. This minus is saying you don't want to use Oscar as a closer. But up here, look, we've got power versus left. He's rated an 8. Power versus right is a 10. How is he for bunting for a hit? He's a 7. Hit and run, he's a 7. Um, uh, right there's his pitching there's his pitching line his fielding his ratings so primarily rated as a center fielder but he's a 7 as a, so he's a 10 as a center fielder so look out DiMaggio and look out Max Carey and some of the other great center fielders Duke Snyder here comes Oscar Charleston rated 7 as a first baseman six as a pitcher. I would draft this guy first out of just about anybody. Later on during a replay, you're going to see how he does versus a team. Again, these aren't ready to play yet, obviously, because there's not two teams. But what is so important here is the amount of work that's being done here. And all of these stats. So again, we're looking at Biz Mackey now. He has 604 plate appearances. If we were to go back and look at Biz Mackey, you're not going to see 604 plate appearances. Yet, this wasn't Steve saying, I'm just going to guess and see what Biz Mackey would have done in um, 1924 um, at with 547 at-bats. I'm just going to say, yeah, at 547 at-bats, he probably hit 12 home runs. Nope. It's way deeper than that. Way, way deeper than that. And this is legit. This is completely, completely, you know, Steve and Clue, did Steve Tate mess up? Let it never be so. So, Steve said he's not, start, have not yet edited pitching specialty or speed, etc. 
and stuff. So Steve talking about here, and I wish now I was on StreamYard or Discord voice to get him in, because why not? We can talk for another three hours. <laughs> um, this is amazing. This is amazing. MV says, I love this project. This is increases my reading. Watch some great videos today. And he's going to put him in Discord. Awesome. So this is um, this is crazy, it's crazy stuff. Um, and I asked Steve prior to this when he started working on this, and we were talking about his five-year files. And I said, "Is this? Would you say this is more intensive?" And he's doing eight teams versus a hundred and eighty plus. This is even even harder work than those, if you can imagine. And um, what what I'm hoping for is that we can get some other channels involved because I'm not trying to build my channel. What I'm trying to do is just get people to get deeper into this game that we love, baseball. And if I can get our Red Sox fan to do some of these games on his channel, it, you know, with our draft league or whatever he would choose to do with them, just to get them out there. Um, some of the other guys, Anthony from Bleacher Bums Gaming, get him involved. Um, some of the other guys that, that would have an appreciation for the history of the game um, to get this out there to people. Even I.D. Jester, if he's listening, I know he's not a fan of old baseball, but I think even he might be willing to do this if he's got the biggest channel in our community. So, hoping. Uh, so if I go into rules and deselect the subfolder for the league, all right, yeah, because, uh, yeah, you guys have to see these beautiful uh, baseball cards. And you'll see why. Because this is something else that he did. It, it's like this dude is unstoppable, this Steve Tate guy. I don't know. He worries me. Um, he worries me. Um, deselect the subfolder for the league. Ba 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 ba. Um, where the hell is where the hell are they? It's in this age of miscellaneous. Quick play. It's an info. Steve. Where are the bloody? I feel like such an idiot. Info, dude. This is info. There it is. All right. Um, and thank you. Oop, I appreciate it. Locate player for. Okay, so deselect this. Select save. There they are. Okay, now are you ready for a treat? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh my God. Bada boom, bada bing. Up here, and, I, and I'll show you larger pictures. See this baseball card up here? Oscar Charleston. And I will go into my directory in a minute so you can see these in a larger context. So, Steve made these baseball cards. Made, he's making baseball cards, getting pictures. <coughs> from uh, For all these Negro League players, I'm guessing a lot of them coming from Steam Heads. And he's created a baseball card template, selected a logo. And by the way, this is going to be called the Buck O'Neill. Um, whatever this league is going to be named for Buck O'Neill. This is like just crazy, 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 crazy. Um, in fact, do they show up better in the um, in here? Maybe they do. No, I'll, 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 I'll show you larger pictures, guys, in a second. There's Josh Gibson. Look, how cool does this look? So Josh Gibson, he, so so Steve's putting in all this information, including height and weight. Josh, 6'1", 220, wouldn't want to get him upset. The Black Babe Ruth. So Steve's neutralized everybody, too, so it's not like he was set to Forbes Field where the Homestead Grays and the Pittsburgh Crawfords played. So that you'll be able to use these guys anywhere you want. Um, one of the mo one of the best ever power hitters and a consecutive triple crown winner. I didn't know that Josh Gibson was a consecutive triple crown winner. How many guys here knew that? And he's giving these these little s snippets, doing all the stats, doing all the work, creating the baseball card art. Now you see why I I, I heap so much 
constant praise on this guy. We are absolutely super fortunate, blessed to have him in, in this community. Not because he's giving stuff away, but because he's working hard. This was a project that, that, that MV and I wanted to do. And Steve, I wish I would have known at the beginning of Ned McGreevy, Ken Castro and I wanted to do that league. We bungled through, and you saved our arses on that. MV just and I, we wanted to do something with the Negro Leagues, and Steve, and big thanks to Big Clue, um, with his resources, of course. I don't want to forget Big Clue at all. They're making this 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 idea, this dream. They're making it a reality. Um, it, it's not going to be ready for a while. We don't want Steve to hurry. However, we're hoping maybe for Black History Month, if Steve has two teams done, that we're going to do this the way they do it in the Negro League. That they did it in the Negro Leagues. It wasn't the World Series that was the big thing, gentlemen. It was the All-Star Game. And it was played every year at Comiskey Park. And we're going to set it up, and we're going to do it upright, and we're going to play a Negro League All-Star Game um, in Comiskey Park, in Old Comiskey. And it's going to be a blast. Are you serious? No. Big clue. Don't tease me like that. Are you serious? I'm sorry. i got to stop this for a second because I think Big Clue's trying to... I think he's taking the mick on me here. Are you telling me that Andrew McCutcheon just signed back with the Pirates? Or are you just, like, jerking my chain, dude? Oh, my God. So, Kutch begged to stay with the Pirates when we traded him away, and, and McCutcheon's coming back to the Pirates? Do you mean we're actually going to spend money? Wow, that's even better news than my Scott McGregor no-hitter last night. Thank you, Big Clue. I wasn't saying you were lying. I just thought you were just, you know, taking the piss, as we say. Pib 99 saying it's true. McCutcheon coming back to the Pirates? Damn. Big Clue is clicking here and typing there. And Steve is working everywhere. Yeah, no, no, man, no, I'm not calling you a liar, but I'm a Pirates fan, and I know that the Pirates don't spend money. And if they're bringing back McCutcheon, and if we're going to build a team around O'Neill Cruz, and if we can hold on to Reynolds, holy hell. All right, I got to show you guys some of these pictures a bit larger. All right, and then, um, oops, and then we'll come back to this. This is beautiful, man. It's beautiful, but feast jazz on this, man. Uh, let's see. How about? Uh, it doesn't matter. These are all great. All right, and I'm gonna blow the picture up before I bring it over. Bam! So here's Dick Lundy. <laughs> big clues as I know that. I'm the guy who will pull your finger, not your leg. So the biggest theological question in my mind, and only God knows the answer to it, was who was the first crow magnet to say pull your finger? Um, I don't know if you are you guys seeing this Dick Lundy card because again, um, YouTube's being super laggy for me. But I don't know if you guys are seeing this or not. Yes, I did MV last night, and I had six. Witnesses, one nothing. Scott McGregor. That was the first one I ever had. MV. So yours was Gaylord Perry. Mine was Scott McGregor. Um, last night. Okay. So you guys can see it because uh, I can't. I can see it on my screen, but not on the screen that's monitoring. It's just never happened to me. Look at that. This is brilliant. Now again, because I've blown it up a little bit, but. Uh, this is so so there's the logo down there that he put in this is a template and Steve actually has a video on how he does these templates just generally right but this is this is brilliant you guys want to see more this is this is cool I, I won't get uh, uh, let's see where I looked at Josh Gibson how about maybe uh, let's the great Martin Deagle. Um let's look at Martin here and we're gonna make him a little going to um, increase the image size. I don't want to return to my Hannes Wagner thing last night. There's Martin Diego that uh, Steve had a hell of a lot of fun carding. 
You never forget your first. That's right. Your first anything. That's right. Is Adam Sadiv stop ribbing me? There's Martin Digo, um, one, just just a beast of a player. These cards are beautiful, and these are gonna be in this league set. So so right so like big clue. He wouldn't have even had to mention the MLEs and all this kind of stuff and offer them all, which he did. Steve could have said, ah, geez, I don't know, guys, you know, whatever. Um, you know, good luck with it. Here he is totally immersed in this now. And um, he's got to have the coolest wife ever, by the way. So, Mrs. Tate, you rock. You absolutely rock. So, so many pictures. So many pictures. I just want to show off a couple more. Because these are great. What about... Where is he? Where is he? Oh, guy I'm always talking about, Pop Lloyd. Otherwise known as the Black Hannes Wagner. There's Pop Lloyd. Check that out, man. Look at that old uniform. These are beautiful. Look at these cards, man. Talk about going above and beyond. He could have just grabbed pictures from seam heads and have done with it. And he also has like these static pictures, but he's also finding action pictures of people as well. So no um, offense there. Well, Martin, you, Martin, you've been up there a while. Um, so let me show you a couple action pictures. This is a great one of Josh, of Josh Gibson. This is brilliant. Look at that. I mean, I don't even know what my screen's showing anymore now. It's not even showing. It's like it's frozen. Four or five for each. So you just open the zip and windows. You can see all the multiple picks for each player. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, you guys want to see? You want to see? You want to see so far? Um, I'll show you, man. Um, where the hell did I put it? Where did I put it, man? I'll show you guys. Oops, not here. It's not here. Hang on. All right. I'm going to drag this over. I'm going to let these guys go. So this is what is done so far, and that's a lot of work. So for Mule Subtles, we see that there's four for Mule Subtles. Um, there's four, five for Newt Allen, for Oscar Charleston. There's four Pop Lloyd. There's five photos of Pop Lloyd. Um, there's what five for Willie Wells. So variety too. And yeah, it's definitely, it's not even like moving along. So I don't know what the hell is going on here. There we go. There we go. So there you go, guys, and we are at four hours and four minutes. This has been fun. But yeah, V, last night, really quickly about that no-hitter, is that, um, so, I was like, I just wanted to do another baseball game after Ned McGreevy, and Cousin Ken Castro was like, I'm up for more baseball, I'm up for more baseball, and... I said, all right, cousin, here's what we have coming up in baseball for Windows. I just didn't feel like calling another Ned McGreevy game or anything like that. And he's a big Phillies fan. I'm a Pirates fan. And I and one of the available games was the uh, Pirates and Phillies. And I thought he was going to pick that. I said, I'm going to read off the list, but I, I know what you're going to pick. I went down, boom, 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 boom. And one of them was the Oakland A's um, and Baltimore Orioles. And he said, what about um, A's versus Birds? And I said, all right. Well, so, so my, 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 my surname is McGregor. So that's why I've got to go play the uh, Mega Millions today. So we do the game. We're watching it, doing some chat. And all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute. Something's going on here. And people are coming in. People are coming in. It was so cool. 
and the way the game ended was class. I won't put you through it because it it's a very, very long stream. Uh, but Scott McGregor with a no-hitter for the 1983 Orioles, pitching against Dave Stewart, who pitched uh, had a two-hitter going into the bottom of the ninth. And yes, um, uh, it was it was a walk-off by Ripken. It was awesome. So, good stuff. Good stuff. And I think we are done. Done, done, done with my bits. Yep. And, I mean, so, we have the same surname. I'm not related. I'm neither related to Scott nor Connor McGregor. And I'm actually happy not to be related to Connor McGregor. Another story. But I'm thinking... I got a no-hitter last night, and for as much as I've played digital baseball, I never had a no-hitter. Never, 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 never. Got one last night, pitched by a McGregor, a McGregor watching a McGregor pitching a no-hitter. I think i got to play the, the, the Mega Millions or Powerball, whichever the one is a billion dollars. How about it? And these guys are in here cheering it on, cheering it on, because they knew... I never had a no hitter. Closest I came, if you guys remember, in the um, was it 1997 or something like that. Francisco Liriano and I forget the name of the relief pitcher now. So I'm playing a baseball game, and I had a no hitter going at the same time as the no hitter was going on in the radio. They got a no hitter, I didn't. And I just every time Robbie will be in here, and there'll be a no hitter going on in a game, and There'll be a base hit, and he'll say, damn it, Beatles, you didn't get it again. And it happened last night. And if Ken would have picked Pirates and Phillies, I don't think it would have happened. Scott McGregor was supposed to pitch that game last night and got a no-hitter. Damn it. Um, did we look at pitchers? We did look at pitchers, didn't we? No, we didn't. Let's look at Cristobal Torriente and as a pitcher. So there he is again. As a starter, as a reliever, um, his specialty is a fastball. He's a he's a super effective ground ball pitcher. Um, but he's also right. He's uh, he's 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 yeah, just all over the place, man. So Toriente, um, Toriente rated at center, left, third, and as a pitcher. He's primarily a center fielder. Yeah, the no-hitter was in the stream, MV. It was awesome. I feel like you'll be going 24 hours. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know if that's good or bad. Same here. I've had half a dozen two-hitters and only one one-hitter, but never a no-hitter on PC. Well, big clue, I'm hoping it comes your way because it it's awesome. It, it was like, I know, I know this seems terribly geeky, but it felt like actually being at a no-hitter, like actually there. And I know it's just, when it comes down to it, a bunch of zeros and ones, but wow. That was, it was brilliant. Anyhow. Big Clue says, just so your feelings aren't hurt, Beatles. It was because of you. It was, um, oh, I, oh, hey. See, he fell asleep in the chair listening. Woke up two hours later and he's still broadcasting. Yeah. <coughs> And MV had it with 1972 Gaylord Perry. I'm assuming with no foreign substances, or at least none that the umpire, none that the umpires would have questioned, because we know that Gaylord Perry liked to keep his hair nice and neat. What was that stuff that they used to use? The dudes used to grease their hair back with, uh, whatever it was called. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Gaylord Perry never threw a junk ball, dude. He was all about just having the neat hair, right? But that's awesome, MV. Wasn't it an amazing feeling? And you don't, you never forget. Did Brillo? Brillo? Isn't that a, pa oh my god. I think Now Big Clue's taking the mick. He's taking the mick now. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this today. I hope it was fun. I hope in some ways it was informative. Um, and, uh, yeah. So looking forward to um, all kinds.
kinds of stuff here. And there will not be a quiz afterwards. So, Yeah, Bucks and Phillies might have been a rain out, Robbie. Brill cream. Yikes. He said he didn't all, or and V says about Gaylord Perry, he didn't always use it, but used to make other people think he did. Oh, I kind of like that. Way to go, Gaylord. So it was his brother. His brother wasn't, right? He wasn't like a spitballer, shine baller, right? Jim Perry. Was he like legit? Forever remained 90. I witnessed it in bed on his phone, and, and it was still great. That's awesome. Grandfather just using it. I think my grandfather did too. I can't remember. Been a while. Anybody got some cool projects you're rolling up or playing or anything? I'm gonna do one more stogie and I'm gonna call this one a day. Um, hopefully yes, Robbie. At Robbie asking if there will be a Ned McGreevy to the league game tonight. Um, hopefully viewership was a bit low last night, but um, yeah. Uh, hopefully there will be one. You know, unless I get hit by a meteorite or something. MV doing a 1959 and onwards league in out of the park baseball. Cool. Robbie Wartburg um, has a lot of projects going. Arnold says, I don't get notifications when you're on. That man, that's a YouTube thing. And I, and I wish I could figure out why YouTube does that. I've heard so many people say they're not right. Because I was asking um, Sports Time Machine the other night. I'm like, dude, are you even streaming anymore? He's like, yeah. I said, I'm not getting any notifications. And I've got the bell and f to receive all notifications. That's just, I've heard so many YouTube creators say the same thing. Thank you, though, for at least letting me know. Hopefully it will, YouTube will sort itself out. But as as the Brits used to say, not, probably not in the reign of Queen Dick. So, um, 1965 in MV's League. Robbie, I'm going to guess, and this is not to make you feel bad. I just want to guess. I want to see if I can guess as many projects quickly as you have. So in Diamond Mine Baseball, you have the Ned McGreevy League, the Pacific Coast League of 1946. I thought you were doing Federal League also in diamond mine but I'm not sure baseball for windows you're starting the federal league um, PC or, or um, baseball for windows you're also doing 1908 um, I don't know what you're doing with action PC baseball I think you're messing with so that's you're not actually doing a project in action PC PC replay baseball I know you're doing a lot of tutorials but I know of at least five projects you're doing Robbie not including Stone Cold Hockey. So am I right? Am I close? Again, not not picking on you. I'm just saying you have a lot of projects. Which is cool. It's fine. Um, so. Hib, uh, 99, doing the 1903 World Series replay in Action PC. Game 5 coming up later. Bucks can complete the sweep. Boy, that would be nice. Giants won in... Um, 62, 63, 64, and lost the series in 65. Robbie Warburg. <laughs> so Robbie says he kind of lost count on his um, projects, but he did promise that um, he's going to resume some action tonight on the Diamond Mine version of Ned McGre the Ned McGreevy League. So we're interested um, in how that's going to play out in action. PC Baseball, Diamond Mine Baseball, and Clinton Parks is doing it, Cards and Dice and status pro baseball. We want to sort of compare it all and see how it uh, gets done. All right. People got some great projects going on, and that is so nice. Um, Steve and I are now, Steve is, 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 is ahead in our head-to-head -head stuff, two games to one. Great game yesterday, 1930s Cardinals. Drop one to the 1930s Tigers, five to four. Dizzy Dean fell apart, 
had to bring in Daffy Dean, and he actually pitched a hell of a game, but just not enough. Well, how you do that is by private messaging in Discord. Robbie says how you can think of how he can help Arnold and others that need assistance with baseball for Windows. If you're talking about assistance in terms of other things, that has to be done in a private chat because of, you know, the stuff that you can get on Digital Skybox and, and things like that. So better to talk about that in private. Sadly, Sandy Koufax never became Koufax in his league. Ah, that's kind of a fun thing, though, in um, in Adler Park baseball when you get those random debuts and what what happens. And that I I do like that feature in the game. Hint, hint to Action PC. Although I guess you can do that with the alternate replay rules in Action PC. I guess that would be kind of the thing. But I do like that 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 is a nice feature. You can have random debut. You don't know when somebody's going to come in and out of the park baseball, which I think is a super cool feature. February May 90, 2000 White Sox in action PC with five players from the previous five seasons and five players from the next five seasons, but must be on the 2000 White Sox squad. Cool. That's a cool sounding project. Okay, Arnold joined the Discord. Robbie will PM him and fill him in with all kinds of good information, which is what we're about. That's a cool project. And Forever Remain 90, the White Sox, um, I'm, I'm very ashamed to say, is, is, a, is a franchise that I need to learn a lot more about. I know the usual suspects with the White Sox, of course, but um, I definitely have big gaps in the White Sox franchise and want to learn more about them. Henri, can you use the old Bill James Encyclopedia for the current app of Baseball for Windows? You cannot. Not directly. So, Henri, when they, when they updated the game to 5.75, they're originally going to have Pete Warren, Pete Van Warren, who used to be a um, broadcaster for the Atlanta Braves. They were going to have him do kind of what Ernie Harwell, but I think it was more picking up where Harwell had left off, right, 1997. And they decided rather they were going to update the game after they bought the complete rights back from Miller Associates, who brought in the encyclopedia and also the Ernie Harwell technology. So the Van Weeren thing went by the wayside, and they removed the encyclopedia import, but there are ways around it. And there are ways around it. If you have an older version of Baseball for Windows and you have the Fan Park Encyclopedia, you can create those seasons and then use the migration tool that comes with APA 5.75 and those seasons will work in the new version with no problem. So, and that's, that's nothing that's, that, I mean, APA provides that functionality. But yeah, they removed Encyclopedia Import because, you know, seasons are a big source of revenue for these companies. So. MV says, um, Dave Pope was a Negro Leaguer when his game starts. In real life, um, so in 1959, he joined the Cleveland uh, Indians, right, Cleveland team. Age 37, he went 19-10 and 10 with a 2.90 under on average and 386 strikeouts as a rookie. Wow. So I love the talent engine. Real minor leaguers get a shot. Yeah, Out of the Park does some great, great stuff. I don't think there's the perfect baseball sim out there, but um, I think that there are some that come very, very close to what you want to do. But the ultimate baseball sim would be the graphics of MLB The Show, um, some of the, 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 best, uh, the, the best features of Out of the Park Baseball, and the best features of Action PC, and the narration updated with better technology, baseball for windows and I think you would have the perfect baseball sim I really do perfect digital baseball sim yeah Miller Associates hasn't been around forever actually they were a company that was dabbling in AI earlier actually Miller Associates got involved not because they were baseball fans so much they were but they wanted to sort of get this technology out there for all kinds of different applications and so by using it, 
the idea was in a baseball game you have ever changing situations from batter to batter or whatever um, and it's a great technology and I'm really surprised that Microsoft didn't jump in and say hey we would like to use that so it's not just a text to speech or um, narrator and by virtue of the fact that you'll still hear things that you've never heard before so anyhow Good God, 12 people still hanging out. Seven of them probably sleeping. <laughs> oh, man. MV says, in 10 years' time, uh, we will have virtual reality sims where you can face Sandy Koufax. <sighs> yeah, and still be... And, and thank God, Sandy Koufax had great control. You know what, though? Sandy Koufax drops that curve. What, what they say, it was like it fell off a table sharp curveball Sandy Koufax had. And you know what? In 10 years' time, you could be like John Crook and bail out against Randy Johnson in the All-Star game. You guys remember that? Crook just bailed, man. He's like, you can have strike three. John Crook was a tough player, but I saw terror in his eyes that night. What All-Star game was that, man? That was the early 90s. And there was just absolute terror in John Crook's eyes. <laughs> Randy Johnson. Whew. I don't even think in VR I'm going to stand in against Randy Johnson. Never. <laughs> Fun memories, huh? All right. Guys, thank you so very much, everybody that's been in here today. We'll do our thank yous really quickly. And uh, hopefully we will do a Ned McGreevy tonight. Stop in if you want for some old time old timey baseball. <coughs> and Steve, I do have a question for you, but I can always ask you later. Um, there's an issue we're still running into with um, one of Ken's players, um, Slide and Billy Hamilton. He's saved in all the lineups, and he's not getting any play time. And I'm not sure why that is. I can't figure it out. But that's for maybe later. What if there's a field of dreams in the works for Negro League players? Be interesting, I think. That would be something. Baseball hasn't done enough. It needs to do more. It is, after all, baseball that kept these men out of baseball. Um, I should be able to do that, Steve. May try a short story. I watched a bit of Buck O'Neill on video. What an um, what an inspiration had me in tears. Same here. Same here. And if you have if you have access to the Ken Burns, and I don't know if you have it there in the UK, if you can get access to the Ken Burns baseball documentary, um, the inning that you especially want to watch is the fifth inning, the one called Shadow Ball. And, man, just Buck O'Neill, you will be enthralled. You will absolutely be enthralled by the great Buck O'Neill. And shame on baseball for not electing this man to the Hall of Fame while he was still alive. He, he never held any animosity toward, you know, the color line in baseball. He said he was blessed to play the game, all those things. And in 1994, when baseball went on strike, he was baseball's ambassador. And all they did was give him a statue, and it was said he was waiting for that call. He really thought he was going to get elected, and he didn't. He was elected posthumously, and I think that is a shame on Major League Baseball. Buck O'Neill should have been able to see himself elected into the hall. It didn't happen. Bastards. Didn't pay attention. Yeah, oh, I get it. I, didn't, I get it. I love that story when he was talking about he was in the celery fields in Florida. and Right? And he's talking about his dad is nearby, but he's sitting like behind some crates of celery, and it's super hot. And he says, uh, right, so you watch the shadow ball play. And he says, he says, I, he says I'm 15 years old. I can't do a Buck O'Neill impersonation. He says, I'm 15 years old, and I'm, I'm sitting behind those crates of celery, and I'm thinking, Saying. He said, I remember I'm 15 years old, my daddy. And he said, he said, damn, it's got to be something better than this. He said, my daddy and I are 
driving home, and my daddy said, son, I heard what you said. And and, and Buck O'Neill said, no, I thought I was going to get in trouble because, yo, I'm a 15-year-old, and I said, damn, around my dad. But he said, you got to get out of these celery fields. You're not gonna. There's not going to be anything here for you. And he said it was that hard work that drove him um, to be not only the, the, the very good player, but also excellent manager that he was. But his story was so inspiring when he talks about um, going with Satch Page and they go to Drum Island where they used to auction slaves in North Carolina. And he talked about how Satch Page could just have this depth about him when you didn't rec- you know, you, you didn't expect it. And he said, they're there at Drum Island and looking at the plaques and things like that. And he said, they sat for a long time. And, and I guess Satchel Page used to call him Nancy. That was the, Satchel Page's nickname for Buck O'Neill. Buck O'Neill said, he said, you know, he said, old Satchel looked at me, he said, Nancy, I don't know, but it feels like I've been here before. And that was so powerful. You talk about tears. Man, somebody was chopping onions. The first time I heard Buck O'Neill's account of of he and um, Satchel Page at Drum Island. Incredible. Just incredible, man. Incredible, man. Yeah, that's a great father. Oh, it really, really is. Yeah, Buck was a great storyteller. MV says, I watched something where they said Jackie Robinson wasn't the best player at the time he integrated in Major League Baseball. And that's actually true. And Buck O'Neill talks about that. And some of the other um, players in the Negro Leagues um, talked about that. And they said, we were surprised that Jackie Robinson was the first one selected, that he wasn't the best in the league. And Jackie Robinson had a terrific temper. Terrific temper. Um, But apparently... Uh, you know, Branch Rickey knew what he was doing, but telling Jackie, you can't fight back for three seasons. Talk about courage. Jackie got spiked. You know, people would bring, was it, was it Philadelphia or Cincinnati? It was one of those two cities where it was especially bad, and somebody had like a black cat at the end of a noose. And, Jackie showed him, though. Right. Willard Brown wasn't the right fit. I, right. Yeah, bet he wasn't the best player, but he was the best man for the job. And I, I, I think I think there's got to be some truth to the fact that Branch Rickey picked a hot-tempered player. Because if Jackie could, could and, and of course his, his, his wife Rachel says she believes also that's what killed Jackie so early, died of diabetes as a relatively young person these days, right, would be young. I think he, Jackie was in his 60s when he died. But for him to to right because he was right there was they tried to court martial him when he's in the military because he refused to sit in the back of the bus and Jackie fought it and won. Jackie was always a fighter, and maybe you had to have a hot-tempered person because if you had somebody that was easygoing, then the white players right the 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 assholes like Dixie Walker and Kirby Higby and people like that. Um, would say we could just run over all these guys so maybe you needed Jackie Robinson who was fierce hold his temper but then Branch Rickey said all right now you can have at it and boy did payback come yes it did number 42 and 42 right why he couldn't retaliate because if he did retaliate that that would have been it right because you it would have fed into all the stereotypes of people of color well they're they're just bad tempered and they just want to go out and hurt the white man and all that kind of crap right so yeah and branch ricky apparently every racial epithet you can imagine screaming in jackie's ear calling him all these names and remember that branch ricky was a very religious man cursing him and all that he said now you're going to hear this for three seasons and you cannot fight back you just got to play ball. You got to play ball, man. And um, a true hero, Jackie Robinson. And I don't give a damn whether you're into baseball or not. Jackie Robinson, just a true, true hero all the way around. All right. Gentlemen, thank you so much for today. This was fun. Yep, and Larry Doby. Larry Doby took too long to get him into the Hall of Fame, broke the, and he faced 
terrible stuff in the American League. His rookie year, 1948, for the Cleveland Indians. Bleacher Bums Gaming. We were talking about you about an hour ago, and it was all good stuff. So, I want to hit you up with a proposition, um, but it'll be for later on in the year, Anthony, and I think it might be something that you'll like. Um, it's, I want to try to get a multi-channel thing going for a Negro League project. No, it's a good thing. It's for a Negro League project. And I think that you'll like it. With your your baseball knowledge and everything and, and what Steve Tate has been doing with this um, fantastic Negro League season that we've been talking about today and what it's becoming. I um, want to try to talk to you, talk to Al and a couple other guys and see how we can coordinate some cool things. Oh, sorry. There. Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll keep you busy, MV. So, yeah, I'm sorry, um, Anthony. They're much better. Okay. So Steve's creating this this, this off-the-wall, off-the-charts. It goes beyond just a mere Negro League uh, thing. Um, and we'll, we'll, we could talk about it sometime. But essentially, it's so important not just for gaming, that I want to see if I can coordinate with you and Al and a couple other guys to also feature these in your channel and maybe with a draft league and stuff like that. I'm not trying to do this to build my channel. I, I think this file needs to be out there that 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 Steve's putting tons of work in. It's probably going to be ready till later in the year. Um, but I'd like to talk to you about it sometime because you're, you know, you're you're one of the um, the people I, I I so respect in this community. Um, and one of the few other crazies is a dead ball fanatic like myself. And your knowledge of dead ball eclipses mine. But I'd really like to talk to you about that. And just run it past you. See um, if you would like to maybe take part in something, a kind of cross-channel sort of things. For uh, Negro League Baseball. But not just any old Negro League Baseball. This is something really, really special. All right, thanks, Anthony. We'll talk soon. We'll definitely talk soon. <sighs> All right. All right. Um, boy, 11 people hate to duck out. But there's other people doing amazing things. I appreciate all of you hanging out today for 4 hours and 33 minutes. I hope we had some fun. I think better than 4 plus hours baseball streams. Well... Um, I don't know what time he does it. If you're looking for more baseball this evening, um, I believe RJL Network will be continuing his replay of the 1988 baseball season on um, with inside pitch cards and dice. And Robert makes it a lot of fun. He's super interactive with chat. Um, he even comes with his own crowd noises. So do check out RJL Network for that if you're jonesing for some more baseball. Um, our Red Sox fans always streaming something. Anthony, Bleacher Bums Gaming, not uh, Marathon. Anthony, Steve and I have been like four-hour streams are kind of like the norm now for us. It's pretty crazy, <laughs> each of us. Um, yesterday, we had a whole bunch of people in Steve, at Steve's channel, Anthony, and out of the, I think, almost four-hour discussion we had, we spent – Almost half of that, looking at rosters and stuff like that, was absolute blast. And we did play a head-to-head -head game, too, which was fun on Action PC Baseball. Um, let me see. Our Red Sox fan always doing something. Anthony, what do you have coming up on your channel? I know you have Dead Ball Diaries. I know you just did College F-Ball with Air Force and Army, I believe, in 2021. You want to let folks know what you have coming up? So please subscribe to Anthony Bleacher's Bump Gaming. Where's my heavy lifting mod? Where is he? Robbie, are you in here? Where's that heavy lifting mod? Henri is asking if uh, Steve is still here. Okay, so Anthony says another dead ball diary with Sam Crawford tomorrow. So Wahoo Sam. Robbie, would you mind quickly going to Anthony's channel and just popping a link in there for him? He could do it himself, but I'm kind of talking to him right now. I'd appreciate it, buddy, our heavy lifter, so that people could please subscribe to Bleacher Bums Gaming. Henri says, Hi Steve, before you get too far in your Negro League project, just beware if you aren't already that 
Chalks M MLEs. I refuse to pick up a player's best season are unideal. For example, his 1941 is probably his number one or number two season, but not in Chalks MLEs due to Chalks choice to use a rolling average. Uh oh. We could be an, and no and Henri speak forth speak forth but this could be another four hours, maybe. So as Steve reads over that. Thank you, Robbie, for putting that link into Anthony's channel. Again, Anthony could do that himself, but um, I appreciate you doing it, Robbie. MV's up for four more. Well. There's a lot of good baseball channels out there, a lot of good sports channels. Um, so Anthony does all kinds of things. Should mention to you guys, he's the inventor of the fantastic Glory Days Boxing. And boxing is, is a sport that I do have somewhat of an interest in, so I will be buying that. He's always He also has a college F-ball game, but for this time I will curse on my channel a college football game. So there you go. Um, Robbie Warburg putting in the link to Berlicher Bums Gaming. Please subscribe to that channel. It's superb. Anthony is awesome. He really is. Smart guy. But waiting for him to do his baseball game. Anthony says he's very. Where's your baseball game, man? Come on. Yes, it is. I've watched our Red Sox fan. Um, do Glory Days Boxing. I've watched a number of people do it on our channel. Al is the best boxing broadcaster in this community. Nobody even comes close. Even Sorry, Anthony, even yourself. And Anthony invented the game. Um, Al Red Sox fan can call a fight like you're at ringside, man. So check that out. If you're, if you're into boxing, pick up Glory Days Boxing. It's a beautiful product. It really is. And Anthony's a developer. And then, and then when you buy it, if there's a little comment in the notes, say, Anthony, we need the baseball game. You know? Yeah. Because, damn it, I want to play the baseball game. <laughs> yeah, his, his, his passion. And he's an excellent baseball broadcaster, of course, too. Anything he does. But when he does boxing, it's like Al, like, just, I don't, I don't know, like, where his head goes. It's astounding in a good way. Um, Henri continues, I mean, there are other flaws in Shalek's process, but his rolling average choice puts the use the guy's top five seasons part um, a bit on its side. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking there's going to be another video maybe coming up to address that at some point, because that's going to be on my head now. Um, uh, yeah, we'll definitely talk about that, um, Anthony, whenever you'd like. So, I mean, you look at the design at any time. Um, he says, so, you look at the design of Glory Days Boxing. I haven't seen, I mean, the football game doesn't, because I don't know anything about football, so, yeah. The, the, the design of Glory Days Boxing, I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful game. The system is elegant. Um... And I can see why the community is going nuts over it. And it's not because everybody likes Anthony. Because even if people like you, they're not going to like your game necessarily. So Steve Tate answering a bit to Henri. He says, not necessarily a flaw due to the fact that no matter the approach, um, it's a guesstimate. Oh, those day jobs. Right. So that's all we have to do is just win the Mega Millions. So. Anyhow, so what did we do today? We we did four hours and 39 minutes and not a single baseball game. We didn't play anything except a, an inning here or there of, s like, what, six baseball games? That's got to be some kind of record. Steve continues, and if I was doing a replication of single system season, it would be a bigger issue. So Henri um, and Steve Tate talking about um, the major league equivalencies that Steve's employing uh, to work with these um, Negro League players 
to card them at the yeah so that they can play the, the idea is is once this league is completed we do it as a draft league Steve also wants to get this into right so that these players are going to be able to play with you know and in, in the in the major leagues like you know what should have happened um, and that's what we're showing you those cards so um, stay tuned for that hopefully again sometime probably going to be toward the end of February for Black History Month. Steve's hoping to have two teams ready. And again, we're going to go to Comiskey Park and we're going to do an All-Star game just like they did every year in the Negro Leagues. That was the highlight of the Negro League season. So do look forward to that. Um, MV says, or Steve says, smoothed out over multiple seasons to grab a peak whether it's a three or five year, etc., eliminates that approach. Also, the uh, major league equivalencies data is just part of his recipe. Yeah, he's not going to give up the the whole. He's like Colonel Sanders here, except much younger, and uh, live. So that always helps. He's baking his own cake. Yep, non for light using his stuff. See, I should and 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 I'm remiss, Henri. I probably should have mentioned that I made such a big deal about those major league. Major League equivalencies, and Steve and I do a lot of talking, and he's not even divulging to me everything he does. And actually, since I'm a bit of a mathematical idiot, it wouldn't matter anyhow because I'd be like, "Oh, okay, man, it looks cool." I just know it's a lot of work, and I hope you guys will be on board for it. Um, it will be an eight-team league. We'll talk about this really quickly, and then we are ending this. Um, it's going to be an eight-team league draft league. Anybody would like to be involved? Once it's done, we'll start getting the word out throughout the community, but it's going to be on my channel, but then any other channels that want to do it as well, have their own draft leagues. That's what I'm thinking of doing, if the other channels would like to do that. Um, you'll be able to draft all the players. We're going to use real team names, again, to honor the Negro League. So we'll have you know, the Detroit Stars, um, the Kansas City Monarchs, Pittsburgh Crawfords, Homestead Grays, all that. But you're going to be able to draft. So you may or may not have Josh Gibson if you're the Pittsburgh Crawfords or Homestead Grays. It'll be fun, super educational, and paying homage to these players who, again, above all players, uh, deserve to be remembered. So I hope you guys will, will join us later in the year for this Negro League Draft League. That's all right. That's okay. I'm glad. It, that That's why I want to go with other channels, too. And if we can all get together on it, I think it would be fun. Because we I don't, I don't want to ask Steve to be doing 16 teams or 24 teams. And besides that, you're going to start to get, at some point, I think you're going to start to get a little bit of um, watering down where this is really a league to showcase these great players. And, I mean, there's going to be, they're not all going to be, you know, Oscar Charleston and Cool Papa Bell, obviously, but I'm glad. I hope it's a, a, a waiting list, a, a long waiting list on every channel that would be willing to do this. I really hope it is. It's important. MV, you have no, you have no, no, no mercy, my friend. He says it's a shame that Steve can't create a thousand players. The, the fact is, is he could, <laughs> and that's what's scary. But we uh, we don't want to. I think eight teams is really. You have no shame. I think I think eight teams is a pretty good number. I think eight teams is is good. That that'll give us a nice healthy draft pool to work from. And um, yeah, I think it'll be fun. And I do hope that people will, will take part. Yes, MV. So eight twenty-five man rosters. Closing thoughts, anyone, before we uh, go off the air? Steve Tate says, "I will several hundred of the Negro leagues, and then move back onto doing the exact approach with Major League Baseball greats for the Combo League." So this league will eventually be into a larger all-time greats league again, as we talked about. So imagine having a pitching duel uh, between uh, Randy Johnson and um, 
you know, Sash Page, Rogan, whomever. That would be awesome. And and, and I want to see, I want to see Cool Papa Bell get on base against Greg Maddox and then just steal his way all the way around to home, Cool Papa Bell. Can't wait to see that. And V says, so 1,000 so is in the cards. <laughs> Bleacher Bums Gaming says, that is ambitious, Steve. This alone will get me to buy action PC baseball. And Anthony, I'm sure by now you know about the five-year franchise files, too, so that Steve's already done and continues to. He's taking a little hiatus now because of this. So awesome, Anthony. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <sighs> The Decade Files. MV, you are... Don't forget... And the Decade Files. Don't forget the Decade Files. MV, you are a taskmaster, my friend. You are a taskmaster. This is why the British won't give Ireland back the six counties. <laughs> mm, I love the British people, though. I do. I love them. Great music, great comedy, great dramas. Decent beer. <laughs> Them's fighting words to MV if I just call the beer in Britain merely decent, but I don't know. Your whiskey can't touch ours, that's for sure. <laughs> Yes, I do know that, Anthony. So um, I could be taking the mick out, or maybe not, Anthony. I do know you're a native Brit. <laughs> I do know that. And I do. And you still have dual citizenship? Nice. No, I do. I love the Brits. But you guys do have to give back the six counties. You have to give back the six counties. You don't need them anymore. Right? What do you guys want with Ulster? Get, just, get, just give us... Give us our six counties back, right? And then you can deal with the, the, the manky Scots up north. But we want our six counties back. Shakala la. Our day is coming. Um, yep. United Kingdom not in the European Union anymore. Yep. Need to build baseball stadiums. What, in Northern Ireland? Because, I mean, baseball's starting to catch on a little bit in Ireland. And, of course, in the U.K., right, there's going to be the London series again this year. Well, we we would there's a lot we would like to have with Ulster because, you know, it's an island. And bastards. Anyhow, no, much I love about the British, obviously. Look at the, my, my, what's my hand on here? Beatles Eternally. Although, three of them were Irish, but still, of Irish descent, I should say. But, come on, it's a British band, it's a reason I'm a musician. Um, eight of my top ten favorite bands of all time are from the United Kingdom. In fact, there's not an Irish band in my top ten, so. Um, I love British drama. My gods, my, my, my favorite authors are Brits. Chaucer changed the world even more than Shakespeare. So yeah, but still, give back the six counties, damn it. 26 plus 6 equals 1. That's Irish math. <laughs> yes, the 1880s and 1890s were indeed the Emerald Age in baseball. In fact, I laugh about it sometimes in our Ned McGreevy League. Try to count how many Irishmen are on base at the same time. No Dexys Midnight Runners in my top 10. Hardly. Hardly. Vo biggest song voted, though, in all of Europe, Zombie by the Cranberries, which is about, um, partially about the Troubles in the 1970s in Belfast and um, Armagh and elsewhere in the north. If you guys, if you Brits, would have just given the promised vote after the First World War, then we wouldn't have had all this problem. Liverpool, right, Liverpool is... Like, uh, I mean, most of Liverpool's Irish descent, but 
I do. I love the Brits. I'm like some hardcore Irish people. Besides, I'm half Italian, so... Right? Irishmen on base? Well, you know that's the origin of the term. The bases are loaded. Right. And everybody that talks about a police car, a paddy wagon, just know that's an ethnic slur. Big clue, man. Right? So this is... Right? And that's that's not nice. That is just not nice. But yet we use it all the time, right? Oh, he's in the paddy wagon. That's all right, though. Do love. I don't have. I don't. I don't. I don't hate the British people. You can't hate a people. I mean, you can't hate every German for what happened in World War Two. You can't ha hate every Russian for what's happening in Ukraine. But you can hate policies. Yeah. Irishman, you know that the bases are loaded. So what about, okay, well I'm half Italian. So what happens if you have a lot of Italians on base? Well, it's certainly going to be organized, that's for sure. <laughs> Let me play into that stereotype a little bit. Um, Bleacher Bums Gaming says, I had a vanity played for a while. Um, that read X Limey. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Did you ever get back over to old Blighty? Anthony, did you ever get, o get back home? Do you take if Beatles comes on later tonight, he may break his single day broadcast record? Could happen. I thought I broke it yesterday, but maybe not. Oh! We just beat the extended version of The Return of the King. We beat it. We did it. Peter Jackson. Eat your heart out. Sorry, I'm lacking in the same special effects supplied by Weta for that Oscar sweeping movie, but it is what it is. Oh, okay, so Bleach Rums Gaming going. Anthony says that they'll be going to Blighty this fall, as a matter of fact. Yeah, we could. No, I can't repeat what you've said. Their big clue. Um, maybe. So that's going to be a lot of 1940s baseball get the DiMaggio's in there. Well, 40s onward, right? A lot of 1950s players of Italian and Sicilian descent. And we do make that distinction, by the way. And it just happens that I'm sort of both of those, but we do make a distinction between Sicily and Italy. So, back home I had a priest, an Irish priest. Check this out guys, if you know anything about Ireland. So Father Stephen, his mom was a Catholic and his dad was a Protestant. He grew up during the Troubles in the 1970s and he became a priest. He's an Anglican priest. Um, but but imagine what, what, what that had to be like. You know, right? Your dad's an orangeman, your mom bleeds green and what's your, what's your, uh, what's your result? I'm going to be a priest. So Father Stephen was wonderful. It was St. Mary's Anglican. I'm not an Anglican, but the Orthodox churches over there did everything in Russian, and I don't understand Russian, so I went to an Anglican church um, for a while, which was kind of cool. Church of England with an Irish priest. I, I like the irony. Oh, well, yeah, so Orthodoxy's been in Ireland since the beginning because prior to the Council of Florence, um, there was just one church. So, yeah, we actually, and Orthodoxy is in Ireland. There's actually a Celtic Orthodox Church, and they are in communion with, um, with Greece, with Russia, Romania. They are actually in communion with us. Um, Italy has a huge Orthodox cathedral in Pisa. So we're everywhere, man, except in the Bible Belt. I have a friend of mine who's a mission priest actually in the Bible Belt in the United States, and he said it's kind of funny because he's like up the road from like a Baptist church and a, a free Wesleyan Methodist thingy, whatever. And he said the people are absolutely like, they're nice to him, but they can't figure out. He's like, well, you're, 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 well, you're not a Catholic. What what are you there? Now, you're not a Catholic. We don't understand quite what you are. So what are you? And the, he said the people are really nice, but... Um, you know, it's it's a little mission, it's a little mission church. I think it's like a converted trailer or something. So we're getting down there in Alabama and Mississippi, Bible Belt. Look out! Here come the Orthodox. 
we want to get you. Evangelicals are like, I've got Jesus. What do I need God for? Oh, ow, yeah, right? That one blows my mind. But anyhow, we have to be careful because we may have some folks in here that would not get that we're just making a nice theological observation and doing it charitably, right? We'll be careful there. It is. It's a converted trailer. It is, it is a little converted trailer. It's a little Orthodox mission church because we're just not... I mean, I think... And I think the guy works for, like... I think he's an... Like, the priest is, like, an auto mechanic because they, they, they just can't afford to pay him right now. So... Egg Big Clues is an equal opportunity kidder. So am I. I. I tell so many Irish and Italian jokes. I do. I really do. But anybody who lives in the continent knows, right? Because what's the big thing in America, right? Jokes about Polish people. <coughs> so if you have a bunch of those jokes, guys, and I'll leave you with this, and you go to the continent, so you go to Holland, you go to Germany, Austria, whatever, and if you want to tell those Polish jokes, make them into Belgian jokes and they'll just love you. People will be rolling in the aisles. Right? How many Belgians does it take to screw in a light bulb? Whatever. You're all set. It's it's especially big in Holland. Which I think everybody should visit Holland at least once, by the way. Alright, we're we're way we're 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 degenerating and it's not even one thirty in the morning, so we better stop here. <laughs> Thank you to Big Clue so much. And thank you for the news on Andrew McCutcheon. I'm going to go check that out. Anthony, Bleacher Bums Gaming, we will definitely talk. Steve Tate, hopefully we'll see you later. Uh, wait, Big Clue says you're pretty poorly off with a fr when the French poke fun at you. All right. God. And then you go to Spain, you get to hear Portuguese jokes and vice versa. I miss it. I miss it. It's a crazy place. Anyhow, thank you to Big Clue, to Anthony from Bleacher Blums Gaming. Please subscribe to that channel, to the the immortal, the legendary, I dare say, and sometimes erstwhile Steve Tate, um, to MV, the Taskmaster, to forever remain 90. And I'm not going to get everybody because this thing went really super long, so I'm going to do my best. To Henri, thank you for visiting the channel. I hope that you will come back and visit. Um, we have, um, we have a couple other people here we've got to hit up to Arnold Hunter, of course, and welcome to our Discord, Arnold. Robbie will, um, be able to give you a lot of cool information to Pib99, who is redoing the 1903 World Series and the Bucks on the verge of a sweep of the Boston Americans in that. And, um, trying to speed this up here, Cousin Ken Castro. Thank you, as always. Hope to see you tonight. Um, Pickled119, Aaron Reed, um, Tape Saturator, Perry Rubino, new member of the Discord and hanging out in the channel. So it'll be good to see Perry back here again. And hopefully we've helped him make a decision between the two baseball games that he wanted to talk about. And if I forgot you, I'm sorry, but I think I got everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie, for reminding me what single life was like, says Big Clue. All right, guys, I do appreciate each and every one of you. I don't care if you're a Brit, a Mick, a Guinea, and boy, am I going to get nailed by YouTube for this one. So, disclaimer, YouTube, I am Irish and I am Italian, so I'm having fun. That's all. All right, anyhow. See you guys around the batting cage, unless I do get kicked off of YouTube for apparently ethnic slurs. And um, appreciate all of you, and I truly mean that. Take care.